What follows is a discussion on the governance process of Bitcoin with Chris DeRose. In this conversation are Shinobi, Aknix, Rick and Mr. Hoddle. The content found herein should be taken as open-minded conversation. Cryptocurrency is an emergent topic of research and you're encouraged to carry out your own due diligence. We'd love to get your feedback and any corrections in the comments below. Well, we got we got DeRose on his toes. DeRose on the toes in the house. Uh, last oh, minute, uh, change, of, change of topic. We're we're going to be discussing the governance models of cats. Yeah, did we decide on a headline of sorts? Did we do we isolate that central issue, or is it just the rubric of governance? Period. Well, I, obviously, I want to kind of keep it in context of uh, Bitcoin for the most part. But I, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe you could explain your thoughts on why we need governments or governance, and your thoughts on how it should be structured and why it should be structured that way, and then maybe kind of go from there. Sure, that'd be great. Okay, that's easy. Yeah, I don't mind doing a debate format. I don't mind doing a uh, exploratory format or all of the above. I kind of think a hybrid of like all of those is like generally what I fall into naturally. I think a lot of people want to hear a out an out debate, a brawl, uh, last man standing format, which I always like, but uh, probably isn't appropriate. Frankly, I don't even know what the like the central debate is frankly i think there's a lot of resentment on this on the topic is really what i see i think my main yeah. issue is the, is the the context it's painted in um it's just i i feel like there there's a lot of conflation of the process of governance with a more formal structure of a government because so I mean, I have all kinds of starting if if you want to get semantical about it, like, you know, a room full of people shouting at each other until a course of action is arrived, that is a form of governance in, in, as far as like the act or the, the process. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't I don't mind developing this further now, but we probably should just save this for the start time. Yeah. So are we, are we just phrasing this right now? We, we haven't started yet. I think so. It'd be nice to have a general rubric here so like i'm thinking like um the, you know chris chris rose defends the need for governance governance or chris rose defends the case for governance in bitcoin might be what i'm hearing thus far well it's kind of what i've been uh, taking away from like your stance on things in the briar patch yeah i i have this sort of uh reluctant attitude about a lot of this i, I kind of have decided this is just what's obvious not what I've necessarily wanted, but I don't mind explaining why I think it's obvious and why people want it. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving that a shoot. I'll, I'll save it till we start rather than, you know, deprive anybody who is you know, waiting for the start time. I mean, I haven't really uh, advertised this much. I don't want a giant stampede in the server. We're only really specced up for so much traffic. I was just kind of planning on publishing it afterwards. Okay, that works. Yeah, I was going to do the same. I was going to publish it on my Patreon. I'll make it public uh, on the Patreon for you, unless you tell me you want to you know, publish it yourself, either first or exclusively. I don't care. I was a little bit uh, disappointed that something's made uh, the censor list last time. I, I, don't, I don't really resent that. I was mostly just disappointed. I understand. Um, so if, if you wanted to preserve that editorial control, I would respect that, albeit reluctantly. I mean, like, is like I'm recording like now, same as you. So, like, I, I'm gonna put it up on our channel. And aside from that, like, you can publish it however you want. I my main concern was just it only being available through like a Patreon or a paywall. You know what I mean? Well, I don't really see the. I don't totally. Yeah, uh, you know what? I, I'd say based on what I'm hearing, I'd probably tell you to release it first, so that you get. You know, the stat. The views aren't as important as the stats half the time, and like, I, I would give you the the stats for like the first day or so and then i would just put it as a convenience on my patreon for people is i think what i'm i would probably do based on what i'm hearing thus far unless you want me to also release it publicly on my i don't, I don't really care i don't fucking care 
Whatever. I mean, like on your end, it's like I'm gonna put it up on our channel. And other than that, on your end, like you, you can do whatever you want. Ditto. Whatever you want. Do Compromise it. Compromise is power. Did you guys actually read uh, my post? It, it's, you know, it's annoying, but I'm trying to codify a ethos for the Briar Patch and the beginning of a governance process there. And I put a lot of my thoughts in there. I'd be actually very interested to know if you found them outrageous or extraordinary or divergent from your views and how. Oh, so I'm going to have to threaten to take the channel from you and, and say there are no rules again. You can try. I don't think Telegram permits that. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, I think it, it's just kind of silly in the way where you assert that ad hominem is an effective way of giving up on a debate because I, I think it, you're kind of exclusively saying that when you engage in ad hominem that that is um, essentially – uh, binary you either are engaging in an ad hominem or a reasoned argument and i i think that doesn't really reflect the reality of things where especially it, it comes into the nature of a debate or a discussion when you're actually making a reasoned argument it, it's not entirely exclusive to counter somebody with a reasoned argument and then critique them as a person for instance like if somebody is outright lying uh, i don't think that it's it's like poisoning your argument at all to call somebody out in a direct way for lying and like I, I feel like the way you phrase that you would consider like you're a liar or that's bullshit or things along those lines at hominem where it's it's commenting on the um the disingenuous nature of somebody else's argument so in a way you are commenting on that person but in a way that's directly connected to the argument they're making not simply just your duty face so I can answer that any number of ways. If I could get you to repeat that when we've started, that's probably the best way to do that. Can we uh, can we uh, actually just get started here in a few? Sweet. Yeah, I'm ready whenever. Good. I'd like to keep this at like about an hour if that's doable. If it goes over, that's fine. But an hour would be great. I don't yeah, want to get involved, but I'm going to stay out and let you two go, go at it. Works for me. Who is that? That's that's um that's me. That, that, that was not you. I, I missed. Who, who was I talking to besides you, Shinobi? I'm I'm like the you. easily conflated uh, Shinobi, or uh, you know how I am. It's Acnix. Oh, that's Acnix. Okay, good. Yeah, he is easily conflated. You fuckers. <laughs> we had you so bad. You guys are the same person to me half the time. Like, I attribute parts of one of you to the next and vice versa. I come in pairs. <laughs> we're, we're a super position. You're an ambiguously gay duo. You don't know it yet. <laughs> oh, that was so gay. It's uh, Batman and Robin with the, uh, the, the SNL skit. Yeah, the ride the penis mobile. That's what that's, that's what I think this Bitcoin mumble might be. Hop in the phallus, mobile. guys. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess uh, we're at the, the top of the hour, though. So uh, you, you want to get started um, and maybe kind of explain some of your, your reasoning behind your thoughts on why we need uh, a governance structure and how that governance structure should be um, structured, <laughs> I guess. Sure. Should we do like a formal intro or should we just get started? No, I was thinking we could just uh, tack an intro on after the fact. All right, so let's do it. So, repeating the question, I think, where did we end up? How did we end up here? Oh, well, first off, can we turn this fucking music off? It's fucking annoying at this point, at least for me. I'm be distracted by it. There we go. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so, for those that don't know, um, there was a run-up here to this discussion that I don't exactly know all the hows and whys in it, but I... I have taken it up upon myself to study some of the governance issues that I, I believe Bitcoin faces and to prototype some of my ideas and some of the Briar Patch's ideas into a, a codification of rules and structure for the better management of Bitcoin resources, talent, opinions, and people. And so I wrote up 
a, a ethos, which was a document that I think was designed to kind of get everybody on the same page. I solicited a lot of opinions on it, and I published it. It's on, it's on my Patreon. It is the ethos of the Briar Patch. Uh, it was, as best I could tell, a reflection of the values of the people there. And uh, that met with some resistance. Uh, not, not so much from the Briar Patch, by the way, but from either newcomers in the Briar Patch that weren't quite part of the original Briar Patch, or from people outside the Briar Patch. And this is a bit of a precursor to conversations that I feel should be had about Bitcoin, and it is very much inspired by the concerns that I have around the Bitcoin systems that are out there. We don't have to say their names. And so I, I think, uh, Shinobi, you took some umbrage here with, I don't know exactly what part of, of this effort, but some of it, which has led into this discussion today. And I think today's goal is to kind of hash out some of our feelings and opinions on what structures are appropriate or not within Bitcoin. Does that sound right to you, Shinobi? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the two things that really uh, pop into mind as far as things I really, you know, take in disagreement with is your, your assertions, one, that, that a blockchain token is a liability issued and held by developers, and two, um, this couple of times you've stated that core is a political party and like these are things that i think uh, conceptually just really hold no water when you really boil it down to the the base root i'm sorry you said the tor like tor was the political party no core uh bitcoin core ah yeah that'll that'll make okay that makes more sense sure should i, should I tackle them one by one yeah, if you want to kind of just give your uh, reasoning before I offer a uh, counter line of reasoning. I'm actually surprised that those, that's where we're at. I mean, I would actually probably allege that you, candidly, in, in the nicest and most respectful way possible, uh, had a knee-jerk reaction, which I think has tempered a bit. If these are the two outstanding issues, in my mind, I, uh, I actually consider that a bit of an Overton window expansion success. But maybe there's more to this. We'll start with these two objections. So... Yeah, first and foremost, what I see happening in this space, and, and I'm going to leave Bitcoin out of it, although I'm going to bring it right back in, is that we have a lot of teams that issue a quote-unquote blockchain token, and they do so with the faith and credit of the team's production as the investment model or the, the center of control over the, the tokens. And in my mind, that is a form of a liability. It may not be a, a strict uh, agreement to refund a payment, but it is certainly a obligation that the team theoretically has. And, and I say theoretically because there's no, there's no overriding law in a lot of these systems. So uh, when you see people that raise money and then went MIA, the, the degree that an obligation exists is highly debatable because there's no uh, enforcement mechanisms. But what was understood by the purchaser of these tokens is that they were given a slice of a resource that was going to be developed further and uh, made available for consumption on the internet by the leading team. And uh, there's a few places we can see that these things kind of went wrong, wherein the developer team decided to like renege on those deals in some capacity and the community uh, went in revolt. I think Starcoin would probably be like the easiest example that I've covered in the past, wherein people who held tokens were slighted by the team in, in many different ways and, and then they felt that uh, the obligations were no longer met. And uh, in, in those systems, it seems very obvious to me that the liabilities were issued by a conglomerate or a group of people primarily consisting of marketers and developers. Now, perhaps where you see things, I don't know if you see it, if, if that's a, is that, is that an outlandish claim for you thus far, Shinobi? Well, outside the context of uh, Bitcoin, I mean, if you want to talk about like ICO tokens or things like Ethereum, I think that's a reasonable claim. But I think um, in the context of Bitcoin, it's it's not really a claim that can be made in an intellectually honest fashion outside of potentially Satoshi. Okay, so I'm fine with that. And uh, I, I recognize that there is a very difficult cognitive gap between what I just labeled as the state of the space minus Bitcoin and, and then bring it towards Bitcoin. Because I think everybody sees Bitcoin as sort of this exception. And, and I like that. I frankly loved that world and lived in that world for a very long time. However, 
I now see a, 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 a very major problem in the space that I don't think is getting understood in the way that I understand it. And certainly this problem has to do with Bitcoin Cash, 2X, and generally a, a rising and perpetual state of resentment by controlling interests in the Bitcoin space. And so when I see these forces start to mount their offenses, I, I have to use words and labels to describe these groups. And it then seems to me that there is a group that is, and, and I know that many people resent this, but there's a group that is at the center of control of the development process. And I know that that is a Roger Veer esque conspiracy, but it's also just reasonable on its own. And I call that group core. I think that's reasonable. Some people don't like to say that word or certainly not that sentence. And I, I then see that what is happening is uh, Bitcoin Cash is taking the liabilities of either Satoshi or Bitcoin Core and extending those liabilities out to a community that's similar to the last community, augmenting those, uh, augmenting Bitcoin with additional features uh, that can be used with those pre-existing liabilities. And so then the question to me is, well, if, if Bitcoin Cash is doing that, and, and you may or may not agree that they are, but if Bitcoin Cash is doing that, well, then why isn't Bitcoin Core doing that, albeit with perhaps the Satoshi system? And, uh, and maybe that's, that's a good way to dissect that. Why don't, why don't you take over from there? Well, see, like, I, I meant that like, in the context of Satoshi, that the, the argument could be made. I, I still don't actually believe that that's a valid argument, even in that context. Because, and there's, there's a couple of different reasons for that. Um, first off, when it, when it comes down to the actual issuance of a token, it's, it's not really a developer that's issuing it. I mean, is are developers engaging in proof of work? Are, are they actually adding a block to the ledger, which is keeping track of all these tokens and issuing new ones? It's it's the miners. The miners are actually issuing it within within a rule set laid out by developers. And also on, on the second hand, I would argue that the liability isn't actually held by the miners or the developers. It's a liability to the market to get whatever the market values it at. So in both of those contexts, like the developers themselves are not actually engaged in issuing anything. They're engaged in the process of creating software within which other um, like decentralized parties can actually engage in the issuing process at a predefined cost. And then also to kind of bring it back a little bit to the developer aspect of things, if Bitcoin, um, in, in the context of Bitcoin, you were to try to make the argument that um, developers were issuing things still, or then which which team of developers is actually issuing anything? Because you, you have Bitcoin Core, you have BTCD, you have Bitcoin Knots, you have the Bitcoin JavaScript implementation. So which one of those developer teams is actually engaged in issuing things? And then to kind of also tie that back a little bit to the comment about a group being in control of the development process. Well, how can you argue that they're in control of the overall development process for the entire protocol when they're simply one client competing amongst a, a diverse group of clients, all of which are not wrapped into the, the development process that Bitcoin Core engages in? So you like a, bit, a BTC... D developer or a Bitcoin developer doesn't have to go get permission or convince anybody in Bitcoin Core to do anything. They can just do it. And by the same token, anybody out there can actually just go write their own client and do whatever they want with it. I forget the name of it. I think it's GoCoin, but there was actually somebody who presented at the Future of Bitcoin conference. He wrote an entire um, client independent from BTCD and Go from scratch. Like he, he didn't have to go get permission from anybody. He, he didn't have to appease anybody else. He simply wrote the software. And how many people are running that software? Not many. Right. So I think that the devs have an inordinate degree of lobbying, influence, and effort, and control. And the difference between a See, guy I, I at a to, conference... I have, to, I have to take umbrage with, with that, that word lobbying, because lobbying is kind of specific to the context of a formalized political structure. I think a more accurate word would actually be advocacy. They're, they're simply advocating something to a wider crowd, and it's not restricted to the context of a formalized political structure. 
I, you know, I, to, to me, the word lobby means to like seek influence on an issue. Um, and, and you would probably say that it would have only to do with the context of like a formalized governance. But like, for me, the problem with that is that, you know, now I've decided what formalized governance is. And I, I don't know that that's an easy, uh, an easy assignment. But what I will say is fine. Core seeks to influence miners and exchanges and users under, under whatever name you want to label that therein lies a lot of their coordination power and asymmetry in the market information and services that they facilitate but you know i, but see, I think here's, that, here's, this, here's a, a quick uh, thing to add in there though you say that uh the, the developers themselves are actually in control of this influence as far as uh lobbying goes but as far as many of the people advocating um for Bitcoin Core or, or that rule set or that, that uh, consensus process, most of them aren't really developers. And they're not directly involved in that development process whatsoever. I mean, Francis Poulet, he, he's not a core developer. I mean, Beauty on, he's not a core developer. I'm not a core developer. A lot of the people actually engaging in advocacy for those things have no formal ties to that project uh, whatsoever. If the so I, this is like the elephant in the room. I watch this space and like I'm not an idiot and like you shouldn't be either. Or maybe maybe you should or maybe, maybe I am an idiot. I don't fucking care. But the point is that when I see core go left, I watch everybody go left. And when I see core go right, same thing. So like for me, there is there is a party line that they they tow that is a great line that I fucking love that I listen to that I use for guidance and that I espouse others use for guidance. And we can deny that that exists, but like, I mean, for anybody listening to this in the channel or YouTube, wherever this ends up, ask yourself how many times you said, I don't know what the right decision is. And then you look to see who the core developers are and what they are saying. And then you say to yourself, yeah, that that's reasonable. Because my guess is that that happens all the damn time, if not every damn time. And in that way, that's how Francis, Beautyon, and these people are getting their information because they've, they've, they trust core and core has earned that trust because they're specialized and they're good. But see, in my case, that's the exact opposite. I mean, I, I most of the things that I am advocating for are because I have independently reasoned myself to a position looking at the evidence myself. And it's not just blindly following courts because I, I have a, a specific um, landmark or a goal in mind. And the reason that I run core software, the reason that I support that project is because right now in the marketplace of ideas of people advocating for different things and different projects they're the only group that is in line with the goal that i personally have what, what kind of development do you do like what, what's your software specialization as a programmer um none really i don't really have any oh. kind of professional level ability in anything really <clears throat> I'm, I'm a stupid well, idiot. so then how much how reasonable is it that you can evaluate these things as well as you know Peter Riuli, um, Maxwell, Dash Jr., back. Because I, I bet you they have significantly greater skill and ability at evaluating the inputs on these equations and the outputs on these equations than you and I do. Well, because it really comes down to um, the difference between implementation details uh, on the lower level and the actual interactions in the, the greater abstract model of things. And, and yes, definitely, to a degree, I do uh, outsource, I guess, um, opinions on specific lower level implementation details until I go read and educate myself in order to make an informed decision myself. But as far as the higher level abstraction of how the entire system functions, no, like I reason things through myself. And I mean, you know, th these are very intelligent and, you know, <clears throat> gifted people. But I'm not simply following along with them. I'm looking at the different pieces in the greater system and how it functions together. And I'm making those decisions after informing myself. When's the last time you disagreed with Core on something? I was talking to Luke Jr. about the uh, SIGOP limitation of 100 kilobytes, I think, per transaction. And I am against that because it limits the size of a coin join and actually has a... Uh, detrimental effect on the, the privacy you can achieve on the main chain because it prevents um, everything in an entire block from being a single coin joint. It, it limits the size into 10 discrete chunks. And why does he oppose that view? 
Oh, he hadn't thought of it until I brought it up. Well, uh, we'd have to ask Luke what he has to say about that. When was this uh, approximately? How long ago? I don't know, maybe like a month or so. It was just kind of an offhand conversation in uh, Slack. And did he actually disagree with you then, or was he just kind of like, No, he went, care? hmm, I hadn't thought of that. Okay, well, that's good. I mean, that's definitely encouraging. Um, that doesn't quite sound like a substantial difference to me between a lot of the core decisions here. Like, my suspicion is that if core said that they supported the uh, New York agreement, that everybody would go right in tow, right behind him. All of a sudden, I wouldn't know two X people. Well, you yeah, know what? No, uh... you, you can't really imagine that world because like, it's a it's very strange world. And uh, everyone's invested at this point. Everyone's heels are dug in. And it, it, would, it would have to be, if, if I were core and I wanted to support the NYA, it's all about the seg. So it would have to be some new information to hit the market that would then be the impetus for change. So who the hell knows what that would be? But my suspicion is that if they did that right, everybody would have gone in tow. Now, we can, we can speculate all day about these, these sort of things, and it, it probably is a waste of everyone's time. But that's usually how these things work. And I generally, like, UASF was a big one for me, because I think that a lot of the core members were pretty, like, silent about UASF for a while until they started speaking out. And then all of a sudden, when core started speaking out, I saw a lot of people just start to drop their UASF stuff. And then the, the retrospective was, like, this narrative where everybody just wanted to signal to the miners that they were in charge, but that they never really believed UASF. But I was there, and I remember well, yeah, I mean, I mean, the like, tone you, with the, like, hatchets and everybody, like, in tow. But the implication in what you're saying here is that, you know, pre previous to that statement, that everybody just blindly follows court. And, I mean, I think the UASF should be a very concrete proof that that is not the case. Because even with core developers uh, stepping up, and speaking out against BIF 148, there were still large swaths of the community that went, no, we're going to do this. Like a, a very large chunk of the community actually very publicly and very defiantly argued against what core developers were advocating. Until I think they saw what core was advocating. And then I feel like everyone kind of like just kind of got a little quiet and not as important anymore. That was the way I interpreted it. I don't know. But like rather than like go over the narratives of history, and we can if you want, but... Um, you know, something I'm, I'm noticing here with you at the moment is this acknowledgement that perhaps there's a narrative wherein Satoshi issued liabilities, and it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the narrative, but it's at least a, a narrative that could be argued. And I've never heard you say that before, which is really interesting to me, because I, I'm, I'm, I watch as people do that, and it seems to me that, like, that, 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 that would be roughly described in my comprehension these days as aporia, as part of, like, maturity and adulthood wherein you begin to realize that there's a lot of uncertainty in this world and that straight answers are few and far between and that these stories sort of track the, oh, I don't know, the, the, the curve of popular opinion. And it, it seems like you're starting to recognize some of that in this. Is that a, is that a fair assessment? Um, no. I mean, like I said, I, <laughs> I don't believe that's a valid argument whatsoever. And I think the, the original argument you were making is flawed. I simply made a comment that your, your original argument is flawed. But here, I think, is a, a less flawed argument along the same lines that you could be making that doesn't have as many uh, foundational flaws in it. Well, here, what's wrong with this narrative? Satoshi showed up, created the world's first blockchain, and did a little bit of PR work on the right place where the right people were interested and people started to mine and they started to believe in the rule set that he created. And as that rule set was followed and energy was put into it, these, these liabilities from the network that he created uh, were created and sustained. And uh, that, that is in fact what one way of describing what Bitcoin is. Like where, where's the fault in that description? Well, I think the fault is one that he um, implied any kind of obligation on his part whatsoever, that that obligation is simply to the marketplace and what the marketplace will give you um, in turn for these tokens. And second of all, um, aside from the times in which he was directly mining himself, he is not the issuer of all of these tokens. It is, is, is the miners that are issuing things. And the only way that you could argue Satoshi was issuing anything would be in the instances where he was directly mining himself and only because he was a miner, not the originating developer of the project. So you think it has to do with the, like, the att attestation of some degree of worth, I guess, or some degree of utility that he was promoting? 
and that you believe does not exist? Yes, I believe in order for there to be an obligation for something, there has to be a two-way deal. I give you something, and I make a promise to you to give you something else in return for that something. There was absolutely no explicit um, promise of some return for, for any of these tokens. This was simply something thrown out into the commons. So I'm looking for this now because there's, there's actually is, a, if I'm not mistaken, a post, uh, I, I think it was in Bitcoin Talk, where Satoshi said uh, to the effect that he would save all of his private keys that they may in fact be worth something one day, or that anybody should save their private keys because they may be worth something one day. So given yes, that, that, that was a statement, if that exists, based you remember on, that roughly. Yes, that, but that was a speculation as to how the market would value things in the future, not himself. And he in, at no time made any implication of him being willing to give anybody anything in exchange for their tokens. He was simply speculating on what the future market valuation of something might be. So you're saying that even though he said the thing he created would have a market value one day because of... And I'm trying to understand what, I don't know what word to use, could. magic. He said it could have a market value. He made the explicit comment uh, once, I believe, that it will either be worth a lot or nothing. See, I, I allege that this notion of like what the intent is, is completely tangential to the issue. So if it comes down to what the intent was, um, we, can, we can discuss what Satoshi's intent was, and I can cite what his statement was, but it seems like that's, that, that's already a distraction from the issue, which is that there there were these scarce tokens created that, I mean, again, we're, we're really far from what I think the core subject is, but these, these liabilities existed from the network. And the network, you, you would probably say, wouldn't be attested to his creation, even though we have uh, a statement of his creation. But I say it doesn't even matter because here we are with a network that exists, an ecosystem through lobbying and through a, a center of rules that is now producing a... a functional value transfer market and like that like i think that that that's the that's the overriding sort of theme here i don't know what you have to say about that what do you think well i mean i, I think that's kind of a ridiculous line of reasoning i mean what what if i was to sit here and, and draw up some specs and you know some blueprints for a, a super efficient um electric car and i i put that out somewhere and some other independent party took that and actually built that car. And this car became a widely manufactured thing that everybody is using. Well, now, how am I responsible or obligated in any way to that thing? So I'm very glad you said that. Because that's in part, if not in full, where governance comes in. But I, you know, I, I want to point out that my suspicion is that you are apprehensive to lump Bitcoin in with the ICOs in any capacity for fear that it would be evaluated in shitcoin terms and that that might be the overriding concern that you really have, which I understand. That's fine, even. But uh, we can talk about why some promises and some teams do better than others, which is really the, the biggest reason that I think, uh, you know, this is the point two of, of what you wanted to talk about, which is that Core is a political party. I believe. And I think that we we moved from a state of anarchy away from one when the first BIP was created. And uh, if you want, we can we want to continue the discussion on that line or do you want to uh, talk more about whether or not a token is a liability? I mean, we can we can move on to the political aspect of things if you want. Yeah, I think it's a good seg segue. So I think, you know, there, there was definitely a lot of truth to the anarchy creation story. And I think that that was a valuable part of Bitcoin's history. But I, th I think that, too, like anarchy, there's like two forms of anarchy in my head. There's the anarchy that is the world that we live in, which is the true state of anarchy. There's, there's really no greater rules. Like there's no objective morality. Um, morality is a social construct. The uh, society that we live in is a function of evolution. And there was no greater purpose to our existence here on Earth other than uh, energy that was not rendered uh, entropy yet. And that's one definition of anarchy. The other definition of anarchy is a power vacuum. And the power vacuum was probably the one that applied to Bitcoin in the sense that blockchain was around the corner. It came to be and it represented a, a new technology that was completely unconstrained, had no, no real controls, no structure. And it enabled a lone wolf type person to show up and begin a process of leadership. And 
that that was definitely how Bitcoin started. And then over time, I think like anarchy always ends up over time in, in that model of anarchy. Uh, what happens is people group. And as soon as people group, you have a identity that is greater than the ungrouped identity, such that you had Marty Malmy and some of these guys who were able to put in much more time together than any single person can. And I, I think that that process of anarchy started to die as soon as there was a BIP, really, which was Amir's introduction. Um, and he, he really is the first one to say the word governance in my mind. And uh, I want to talk to him about that. And I think he will come on my show at some point to do that. Um, but you would suggest that the, the, the BIP format was not an epoch of structure and governance, maybe? Or do you recognize that it is? No, I think that the, the power vacuum is not actually a um, a accurate representation of anarchy. I think that anarchy is, uh, at least philosophically, from my point of view, simply a a vacuum of involuntary structures. All, all structures that arise are completely voluntary. And, and again, I kind of want to call back to like what I said with the token issuance issue. Like, well, wait, if if developers were actually liable for issuing these tokens, well then which developer group? Because there are multiple software projects that implement the Bitcoin protocol. And so this goes again into like, uh, I don't really see this as a formal government oh, structure. I, I, I'm, I don't want to interrupt, but at the same time I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Involuntary versus voluntary. That sounds very libertarian. Can, can you just go talk a little bit more what you think anarchy is? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, well, I, I kind of want to tie it back into like the, the topic about Bitcoin. But it, overall, in, in order to really call something a, a government or a governmental structure, there needs to be some kind of way to impose or enforce the rules that that structure has. Well, uh, when you really boil things down, Bitcoin is just a mob and uh, software projects or developers are simply advocates for something in, in a marketplace of ideas. There is absolutely no way to enforce one particular software project's rule set on the mob. At the end of the day, like no matter what you might say about structures that, that uh, evolve for different advocates for different software projects, there is absolutely no mechanism whatsoever to force all the constituent members of that mob to run a particular piece of software and consent to a or assent to a particular software project. They have to willingly choose to do so. And there is absolutely nothing really except your own competency and your own reputation that prevents you from advocating for something different than the, the group that is predominantly um, consented to by the mob. So I'm kind of confused as to how you can argue that this is like this any is kind of any kind of formal formal structure, formal structure. Formal structure, because this is all at the end of the day 100% voluntary. There there is no way to enforce upon that mob any particular rule set. They have to consent to it. So I think you can force it in the sense that you can have you can incur monetary losses. So I think a lot of this would just would can be contingent upon whether or not you believe. Um, finding, for lack of a better word, finding people is a, a method of force or if it has to be like jackbooted thugs that are forced. So in, in your mind, is force always require like physical violence or there is it also possible to exert force by way of financial losses? I would call that coercion, not, not force or enforcement. You can coerce somebody, but you cannot force them unless they willingly relent or consent to something that there is no method whatsoever that is going to get me to run a, a Bitcoin software that I do not choose to. Like you cannot make me do that. You cannot enforce that upon me. You can only attempt to coerce me. Well, I mean, therein might lie the rub then. I think for me, I think that financial losses are very much a, uh, a, a method of uh, redress that you can use in the blockchain space that is used all the time. I mean, that is the basis of, of blockchain in many ways, certainly through proof of work, wherein the penalty is a loss of uh, value. Now, I think in your mind, it would have to be met with like chains and whips or something like that, which I, I don't know that that is or isn't reasonable. I'll let people decide. I don't, it doesn't sound reasonable to me. I think that force often or even usually exists by way of financial damages and that the force component is not in fact what establishes power so much as the money does. 
but but well, it would I mean, seem can like you, can that you clarify would be what case. you mean by financial damages and how that can coerce somebody off of a particular rule set yeah i mean that I mean that's the central debate right now with like with 2a uh with, with segway 2 here is uh in the nya agreement is that you have people who are now going to be devoting uh seemingly a lot of energy we, you know we'll see what actually shakes out if it's true or not but um they will be devoting a lot of energy to overriding uh the core rule set with some new rule set and in doing so uh they will provide great risk on the system there would be a a, a, a source of risk for exchanges and hodlers and uh commerce and alike wherein it is possible that some of the transactions that you do could end up being, you know, double spends of a sort over time when if they chose to make that spend on the wrong chain, uh, it, it ends up being reversed and then they no longer have that in their balance should the system migrate to the greater energy chain. And uh, the greater energy chain would always be a systemic risk for Bitcoin in the sense that it could 51% attack Bitcoin um, at any time. So like it conceivably could be that like, let, let's just say, I don't want to promote this as like likely, but let's just say, 80% or 90% of miners decide to run uh, NYA Bitcoin, then in that case, Bitcoin now has um, you know a small fraction of the energy there. So anybody conducting commerce in core uh, does so at a great risk. And it could be that at some time, um, the core chain is attacked and the faith is lost and then the NYA chain succeeds and now you've lost all the money that you've had. So like, while nobody came to your house and beat you up, they stole all your money or they stole a lot of your money. What do, you, what do you think about that? Is that not well, forced I mean, or that there, is forced? There's, there's three points I kind of want to make here. Um, one, uh, it would be very trivial to soft fork in a new proof of work and secure a chain against an attack like that. Um, two, that that's simply the risk of the market. I, I don't see that as any type of um, intention or coercion with intent. I see that as just the market, if things were to go that way, telling you what something is priced at. And I guess but my last the point IRS would be, is, a, is um, a risk of the market. Wait, the IRS, quick, though, my, my last how is that different than the IRS? Would, would you agree then that the entire New York Accord would, in fact, be an experiment to test your hypothesis? Well, absolutely. I mean, that's that's part and parcel of this whole discussion. I mean, that's where we got. That's how we got here. Is to, is because we're asking these questions. The Overton window was expanded. Like that. That's what that did to me, and that's what it did for everybody. So yeah. But but yeah, I, I want to circle back for a second. How is it that the IRS is not a market force, or or the local police office isn't a market force in the sense that you could you know just leave the country or shop around and find a better country that lets you do whatever you want to do in your mind? Well, I mean, in what way do you mean a market force? Because that that is a piece of information that once incorporated by individuals, they will use to decide what they view as the fair price of something. Well, like if you sell cocaine on the streets here of America, you're, you're going to end up in jail probably over time. So you could shop around and find a country where that's legal. You can go to the Netherlands or you can go to, um, co you know, communist Laos or you can go to these places. So like there's th there's no force that applies in, in a greater sense there other than the local market forces, which you have complete and total control over. Well, I, I would have to disagree with that because the IRS uh, that comes with the law enforcement as, as the implied recourse there. There's actually a physical means of enforcement for what they are dictating or the rules of the situation. That is something that can be enforced. Like in, in what but, but way can Roger I Veer, be forced to run a particular piece of software? Well, first off, Roger Veer decided he didn't want to follow the IRS rules, so he he opted out of the rules. You can opt out; anybody can do it. Uh, it costs a little bit of money in some cases, and and oftentimes none. So that was that was one easy way to not have to pay taxes. Maybe it's easy, you know. Obviously, most people don't do it because maybe it's not. Um, and then you had a second question, I think. Well, I'm I'm kind of at a loss here as to how this relates to like a governance in in the formal sense where things can be enforced by this governance structure. Like there is like I'm still kind of at a loss for where you're reasoning here that things can be enforced upon me. Like I I, I just see you trying to rationalize as to how what I'm valuing could be overvalued as a, a means of force. Well, you're you're completely free to do whatever you want at any given time. You can you can run around the block naked. You can jump off a building and parachute down, and and you can probably rape a bitch if that's what's important to you. Um, but you always you always bounce that that idea off of the likelihood of receiving some some action against you. I mean, these are these are basic things, and uh, for that latter reason, even even though there isn't any necessarily force, 
uh, there's there's a risk coefficient and there's a financial coefficient. Uh, you know, a lot of people could just argue that jail itself is is merely a financially constrictive thing. It's not necessarily an act of violence per se. It's more of a, a taking of all your shit. And uh, you know, for me, like this this sort of magic word that is force doesn't seem like it's entirely useful in this debate. Certainly, I don't think that it governs ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people's behaviors out there. Uh, so much as the monetary ramifications do. So I, I remember that second question you had, which I, I think was, um, to what degree can like core cause a problem for you uh, financially? And um, you know that th this there's there's so many different ways. Um, Segwit was something that was um, probably the opposite of a problem. It, it gave you a lot of financial freedom, but I think that the miners obviously took some issues with it for reasons that are very dubious, but existed. And uh, they took money from the miners in the miners' heads. So, like, that's one easy example of how Core did that. And Core did that because they had a lot of uh, pull with the exchanges and they had a lot of pull with users. And because of those two things, they had a lot of bargaining power at the table uh, with miners. And now, of course, we're seeing the tables uh, start to turn. You know, whether they will or not is up in the air. Probably it won't. But these are, these are, like, really basic things in how groups of people work it's not i don't think this is like some great realization that i've had it's just that like everybody should probably recognize that you know if you work at a company that's a great example companies have structures of governance and they deal with employees based on financial ramifications as a way to uh, address incentives in the workforce like that's another great example Yes, but a, a company ha has the ability to fire you. They they can actually directly excise you from that structure. In, in what way can any developer's actions excise me from the structure that I'm a part of? In what way can they enforce that? What in what well, way the DAO, can they right? make me leave the DAO? The, 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 the DAO network is... that I'm a part of, that I'm appearing there. There is no way for them to force me out of that there is only the possibility that the environment changes in a way that i choose to leave that structure there, there is no means to make me you're completely wrong about that though look at the DAO. the DAO was that was the lesson of the DAO is that the developer rule set could specifically exclude individuals that is within their power if they can if they can sell the community on it which which the ethereum foundation did but that's not the developers doing anything that is the the, the mob choosing to act in a way and again that's it's not really any they're not excising me from that rule set that would simply be the mob choosing to all get up and go to another rule set to become a different mob and i am still left with that choice of do i stay where i am or do i go follow that mob and that's still a choice i am not forced to do anything except make a choice well, the but first off, it was it was Vitalik's like unilateral decision. It was a proof of friendship equation, and it happened very little time. And I remembered that it was in and twenty-four it's, it's, hours, and, and there was no classic great this, vote that, or anything should, like that. That should demonstrate that that you cannot do that. The people who chose to remain with that original mob, for lieu of a better word, are still part of that original mob. They were but, unable but, to be forced to move over to something else. Are you telling me that the DAO, you truly believe that the DAO hacker was not forced to lose money as a result of Vitalik's decision? How does that, like, uh, again, how is that moving him out of the rule set that he was a part of? The, you're, you're trying to conflate the, the, the market value of something with being a part or not being a part of that thing. I mean, you entered this question, you have to replay it here, but like, you entered this question, I think, saying that the developers couldn't you know, unilaterally force out some participant. Uh, in a financial constraint from the market, and then I gave you an example of the DAO hacker, and and now I don't. No, know I, did, I didn't say where that they I lost couldn't you be or... forced out, out of. I think you market. did. I said they couldn't be forced out of a rule set. They couldn't be forced out of a group that is valuing something. I said that the market can value whatever it is at whatever they want, but that in no way forces somebody to cease being a part of that thing. I think this notion of force is like like very binary, and I don't see the world in that way i think what i see is that there are these groups that create risk and they create loss and they create wealth and in forming alliances with each other and compromising 
they have greater abilities than individuals to achieve these ends. And I think you're stuck on this word force uh, for reasons that I don't really understand other than it's a libertarian trope. Well, I mean, I, th I think I've been pretty clear in this, Chris. Like, in, in order to govern something, you have to be able to enforce. And when, at the end of the day, all this is is software that people are choosing to run, what mechanism do you have that can actually force me to stop running that software? All you can do is try to incentivize me and hope that I do. You can't make me do anything. Okay, Th this sounds extremely obtuse, and like I don't mind discussing it, but I feel like anybody who's listening to this has to make a decision for themselves. Do they believe that a government uh, controls actions of members through incentives? Un you just cut out there, Chris. Hold on, I lose you? Yeah, you might want to start your recording Sorry. again. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where exactly I lost you, but it, it sounds like what, what we've hit a, a discussion sort of uh, conflict here, wherein I think you think that governance requires jackbooted thugs to enforce, where I think, uh, certainly I believe that the government creates incentives uh, that are generally financial, but, you know, otherwise uh, related to power uh, without the need for clubs. And, and I think that that may be where we're stuck. And there's, but, there's some easy ways to get past that. And I think like, that everybody Chris, listening... All of, that, can... all of those incentives, at the end of the day, when you boil down to the bare bottom, comes to enforcement. That ability to enforce is what gives any of those incentives weight. And that's the clear difference between a structure like that and a structure like Bitcoin. There is absolutely no means to enforce at the foundational level of those incentives it is completely voluntary i have no idea if it's if it's me or you uh that's going to disconnect i'm sure it's probably me yeah it's you Hold on one second. Here, hold on one second. Okay, so it, it's, it's your belief that Core has no ability to enforce, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the, the, the BIP process was like the codification of how new features would be syndicated and mandated. But see, I think you're, you're conflating the process of internally arriving at the state of a software project with being able to actually force people to use that external to that project itself. Like Again, like I said, all this is, is is an advocacy group. It is a structure internally of a group of people building something and advocating for it. And there is absolutely no ability to enforce what they're advocating on anybody who doesn't freely choose to. And there are absolutely no barriers beyond competency and reputation uh, preventing anybody else from creating their own structure and advocating for that. Do you believe that the Bitcoin network hard forked in 2013 through the Hearn bug? There, there was no hard fork. There was a, a rollback and a reorganization. Do you, do you believe that individuals had an inordinate control over that process through their affiliation with the core distribution channel? I believe that the individuals had a choice to make and they made it. And again, as I said, there was no hard fork. There was a chain reorganization, which is always something that is possible in the confines of the system. Do you believe that American citizens have the ability to leave their country at any given time and or uh, run for office no, and vote on a platform don't. that they don't. Okay. Well, they I, I think that, don't. Yeah, but it, I don't. I don't think so. I think that Americans they have to settle their their I with the government. I can't leave my country without getting a passport, which they have the ability to approve or disapprove. I cannot permanently leave my country without paying an exit tax on the net uh, worth of all of my assets. That I you factually cannot make the statement that an American citizen is totally free to just pick up their bags and leave the country anytime they want. Well, they have to settle their tab, but that doesn't mean that they are not free to settle their tab and leave the country. It, it seems like your definition of freedom means that there's zero responsibilities to people you've made commitments with. 
Well, see, now we're digging down to the, the root uh, philosophy of this. What's is a commitment? I, I don't ever, ever recall making any kind of commitment whatsoever to my government. And, and by the way, the, the, other, the other component I would say, too, is that you, you are free to run for president at any given time as well. And, and you can change the country and you can not be shackled, you know, if you want to go that route. And it's very similar to what we see here with Core, because like you can start your own Bitcoin, too, just as easily as you can run for president. Probably even less easy, frankly, than running but for see, president. I think for president, you should just write your name down in a ballot. Because like in order to create a new Bitcoin client and advocate that, all you need is the competency as a software developer and a reputation that is not tarnished. You can freely advocate wherever you want. There are all kinds of artificial barriers, requirements, and conditions to partake in something like a presidential uh, race in the United States. They, those are not mappable situations. So I think we hit the, I mean, I don't mind going this further. I think we hit the point in the conversation where it's like, we're going to get into like what the definition of the word political party is or politics or like freedom or something like that. Uh, how about this? Do you believe that there is a group of people that are part of the identity that is core? No. Okay, that's fine. You can say that. that. I think that that's obtuse and I don't think many people would agree with you on that. Uh, but that would be, that would be a fine thing for you to believe. Um, how about this? Do you believe that there are people who have more control over the git commit process in Bitcoin Core than others? No, I believe there are people who commit more than others, but I do not believe that gives them any control. And to wind back to the first question, if Greg Maxwell, Luke, SIPA, Vladimir, if they all just stopped contributing and handed that over to some other group of people, it's Bitcoin Core still. It's still that software project. It's still that repo. It's still that code base. And that identity as a distinct project has absolutely no required ties as far as the definition goes to that specific subset of people. Well, I think, I think that that's, uh, you know, I know you don't mean it, but I think it's a little rude to the people who are uh, like Peter Wiuli and, and others who are monitoring commits every day and are assessing the dankness of the commits and including them into the master branch. And uh, if you don't think that, that process is real, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it seems real well, to me. Well, I mean, me. here's a counter question, uh, Chris. Is Bill Clinton uh, an integral defining characteristic of the U.S. presidency? I mean, you know, he absolutely was. His His whole legacy was part of the election last year in the form of his wife and a bajillion parts of like the national debate is now a, a function of his legacy and the so, opposition so to the current the, president. The definition of the, the president's office is in a way contingent upon Bill Clinton's identity. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not necessarily his identity so much as platform. Uh, and I don't know how you want to like t detangle those, but certainly. I think that is a far stretch of illogical rationalization i mean you can look at this whole like russia allegation like that that started that's a big part of the national dialogue right now and that started during the election um the uh the whole the whole notion of uh, god I, I, you know so many things everything from like the wall being a, like an issue uh in immigration and uh on and on and on uh it seems like those were in opposition to uh the hillary platform and these are these are like you know whether whether but I, know, I don't Bill see what Clinton, that's what's 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 what I don't know why this is relevant to anything. Why, well, I'm that, neither do I. You, you ask me because you you attempted to essentially take an abstract thing, uh, Bitcoin Core, and claim that specific people who are part of that are an integral part of its definition. And I took a, another equivalent abstract thing, the office of the president, and asked if one individual who has held that office is an integral to its definition. The answer in both cases is no. And I, I'm kind of at a loss for why you're trying to rationalize the, um, the answer as being yes. Well, public policy is a dialogue. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you about that, but that's just the case. And you have interests and groups and demographics that have shared grievances and politicians dip into that well and then they become the the anti thing if if there are people who oppose uh, one politician and it's just that's how you get through uh society i mean th this kind of reeks of like the, the ignorance of how governance works to me um like i'm not going to tell you that bill clinton 
is pushing buttons in the White House at the moment, but like to dismiss him. I, I still don't know what this has to do with Bitcoin Core exactly, but that doesn't seem like it just doesn't seem like my claim is at all extraordinary uh, at all. Well, it, it does to me. Okay. Well, I'm sorry it does. Um, I, I don't know. Channel, you want to weigh in? Like, is, is, is like Bill Clinton's legacy represented in the dialogue that is national politics in 2017? But see, it's not his legacy being represented. It, the question was, is him holding that office, is his personality an integral part of the definition of that office? I mean, he, he that broke so many boundaries as a president that the like decorum, at, at the least, would be, I mean, uh, you know, expanded in, in certainly the Overton window sense. Uh, these are so abstract. <laughs> like, I don't mind but discussing that's where it. He, like, the office, right? I mean, for me, that's where he screwed up the office. Like, that's where the idea of the office of the presidency and this idea of a good governance structure within the United States was kind of lost. So, I don't know. I mean, I... I don't. I don't know how to evaluate that. Bill Clinton was a president, and all all old presidents are good presidents, and the new presidents are the bad ones. Has generally been my experience. Um, well, and, you know, he did good things and bad things, but he was, but he was a Rose, bigger it's, head. It's kind of the thing. Like I, I don't know how to evaluate a claim that current people involved in a project, was a, which is an abstract thing separate from any individual personality, are somehow an integral part of defining that abstract thing. You, you see, well, you was, see what I mean? Was Satoshi a, a, a integral part of structures because that's the question you're asking and i think the answer is yes no because um his name could have been fucking peter piper <laughs> and bitcoin would still be the exact same thing that it is his personality has absolutely his his presence has nothing to do with the defining characteristics of the thing itself that he produced So, so I'm sorry. Are you saying that the name itself, like, so Bill Clinton by another name, would I guess not be? So if Bill Clinton was called like, you know, Charlie, you know, Nathaniel or something, I guess, like, then Charlie Nathaniel would have an influence. I just, the, the, the Bill Clinton very, example very was a, a rhetorical question to try to illustrate while why your assertion is kind of ridiculous. I think I think some things are pretty evident here. Like uh, you could take the very early Bitcoin that just the it, everything's written in main, just super simple thing, right? And you can let it iterate until now. You can you can constantly remove people from the mix, right? But essentially, Bitcoin is is very much like a jigsaw puzzle. It's very much like building out a, an engine, and you have a bunch of the parts, and you know it's kind of cobbled together. But you're going to improve efficiency and add on to it. There's only so much you can add on. And build onto it in certain ways, like there, there's kind of like uh, the way Sig Segwit went in, the way Checklock, uh, Checklock Verify went in, the, the the way a lot of these things fit in are kind of like a natural like click lock down, like put it on, go to the next thing. So like I, I see like a lot of the progression in Bitcoin as being like pretty natural, and I see that really not mattering too much who's there and kind of part of it is that the the development team they get funding to to be volunteers on that right there's no strings attached to a lot of those funding sources right and some of these other individual devs they started the company that they work for to build products but they're also contributing volunteer time to bitcoin and paying themselves out of you know or or so there's a lot of this type of behavior going on. It's, it's, you know, there are a bunch of volunteers at the end of the day because there's only so many different ways to iterate on DNA. Let me ask you another, this is a bit of a tangent, but I think it should be entered into the conversation. Do, do you believe, or do you understand at least that most people are completely incapable of making reasonable opinions and require somebody to make that opinion for them by way of media? But see, Chris, oh, you're trying to put tough. like put that as a, as an implication of a, a position of authority or control when it's not the case because that person who is incapable of assessing things themselves is making a choice on who they are going to delegate that to. There is no form of control there. There is simply a choice that is uh, different in its nature. Okay, so anybody who's listening to this, and if you haven't already, Shinobi, I highly recommend you should watch. Uh, the Jen Senko interview that I released uh, last week that I filmed like months ago, where we talk at length about the degree to which people cannot make difficult decisions and rely on outsourcing their opinions, and, and in a good way, even, 
to others. So I, th- I think that you may think, and it, this, by the way, this is really a big thing I think people don't understand about the space is that like it used to be that the people involved in Bitcoin were pretty competent on average. We all knew how to at least use the command line executable. We knew how to um, you know, navigate Unix systems and on and on and on. And now those days are gone. So the people that are left are not that bright uh, in terms of their technical competency on average. And they rely on a lot of propaganda and a lot of bullshit and a lot of uh, oracles to make their decisions for them. And yeah, but I mean, I, I, I think this has to do with the heavily medicated world that we live in and the number of people on antidepressants, which is, you know, let's talk about macroeconomics. I think this is directly related to the, the problem we're experiencing here. Well, and that also, might be, Chris, but like what um, universe you're, you're do you live in? You're kind of one-sidedly representing that with propaganda and bullshit and oracles. You're also ignoring the fact that people are, are simplifying concepts, producing educational material, trying to bring people's level of understanding up as far as it can be so that you are only delegating those things which are above that bar. It's not simply just blindly following an oracle. There are degrees to which you can be competent. There are degrees to which you can understand things. And I think you are being incredibly one-sided in the way you're trying to frame the nature of somebody not making a a 100% independently informed choice. Uh, Again, I would defer you to Jen Senko. Her movie, uh, The Brainwashing of My Father, was very good. And then the the meta-commentary that we had together was uh, equally good, I thought. And I firmly believe, and I think you would too even, uh, that there are many people who 100% outsource their decision-making to others. I think Andreas is somebody that many people have done that with over the years. And I think Roger Veer uh, represents a lot of people on the RBTC side of the space in terms of their complete and total uh, delegation of thought to you know an ideology. Yeah, but I, I still, again, to kind of boil this back to the entire point of this, um, how is that you know an ability to enforce anything? Those people are choosing to do that nothing is being enforced upon them well of course yeah i mean like again you we all choose to leave the house every day like 100 percent of your problems are because you left the house today and that's true of everybody all the time damn near so that's like like this not entirely choice. accurate either that's a kind of a an overly simplistic metaphor somebody's problems can derive from choosing not to go out the house like that's uh what, what do you mean by that the, the point is that you you have complete control over your exposure to life and you can you can you can dice it in ways that are like so authoritative that like we are effectively raped or something as a result of like bad choices or you can recognize the subtlety that is the universe wherein we engage in risky behaviors and we we choose but we also have uh risk quotients that are presented for us to choose from and and to the degree that there's there's force well maybe the force that exists is in shoehorning these decisions into silos for us more so than it is into like, I don't know, clubbing us when we go left as opposed to right. I I feel like you still have not articulated anything that, that explains in what way this is a a government structure in which anything can be enforced upon people. This is still boiling down to at the end of the day uh, with every rationalization you've offered so far that people make choices that this is voluntary and that there is absolutely no way to enforce any kind of change of things on people well, they must choose very easy. to do what? so and the, the prerequisite of having a formalized government structure is for there to be at the end of the day a bottom foundational layer of that incentive to do something an ability to force people to do something otherwise very easy, there, there is Kenobi. no ability to govern there is simply the ability to advocate to people and for them to make a decision. Do you like drive chains or side chains in any capacity? I'm still very skeptical of the concept. Well, you're probably waiting for Core to make your decision, but I'll assume that you're not. And let's just say you liked that feature. Let's just say Shinobi oh. Monkey liked that feature. No, because see, now you're, 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 you're strawmanning something. I, I have very specific problems with that in relation to the ultimate size of the blockchain or the block. Let's, that say, is, I, let's say I like block. that feature. Hold on, hold on. Let's say I like that feature. Let's, 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 let's not get into a discussion of side chains. Let's say I like that feature. I want to run Paul sports drive chain. I want to run it today. So I can, I can do that. I can, I can merge his code into my Bitcoin 
And by all of the choice that I have, I can run an island of Bitcoin with, 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 with drive chain support. And the force of the market controlled by individuals, primarily led by core, prevents me from engaging in any sort of interpersonal interactions on my own personal Bitcoin. And I don't know to the degree that force enters that equation or not, but I bet it does somewhere. In, in what way um, is there any ability to have force enter that equation? You, you, if you do that, you are off on your own side chain now of your own free will. It does not affect me in any way. It does not force anything upon me. Um, I'm not sure what you're trying to get at here. But what I'm getting at is that it costs me a whole hell of a lot of money. And I mean, like your logic is very much like the Liberland logic. Like you, you can go off to Liberland and, and like you can pretend that you, you know, have your own government there, but like it's a government of next to nothing. And it, it may not actually exist because of all of the pressures and social risk and dynamics of, you know, the, the universe that we live in. Um, and you can leave America if you want to, if you don't like these things. Like, like you have all of these choices. Nobody ever has to go to jail. You can do what the Vegas shooter did if you want. You have the choice to not go to jail at any given time. Like you, you have to choose to have force against you. You can always choose to like obliterate yourself otherwise. So I don't know this, this arbitrary like decision that you've decided is like getting clubbed in the head as a measure of governance, I, I think is, is your, Chris, like, I think confusion. you're just going completely off in the weeds here and just pretty much straw manning my, my entire point. You are stating that there is a governance structure. Okay. Well, I, have defined the nature of a government, you have to have the ability to enforce that governance. So I'm asking you to explain to me in what way you can f enforce that governance. You have yet to offer I did. an explanation no, I absolutely as to how did. it can be enforced. All you've done is offer ways you were banished in which it to can an be island. incentivized. The, the force was that you were banished to an economic island where you can conduct business with nobody. It is functionally identical to jail in Bitcoin terms. Um, what? Yeah. H how does you moving off to a drive chain put me on any kind of economic island like you, you're just like you're not no, making any I, coherent sense no it makes full coherent sense if i want to support drive chain i want to run it today i have full control over my ability to run drive chains so i do so and the penalty that was that was uh, you know assigned to me as a result of that unilateral decision is an inability to work with bitcoin that i no longer have the ability to work in a, a larger group and like, here's the other thing too, I'll say, like, to, do you believe that governance exists like in the IETF standards? Do you believe that governance exists in nonprofit organizations? Do you think that governance exists in Wikipedia? See, but Chris, you're, you're drawing very flawed analogies because you are trying to compare something in which there is actually a central aspect in which things can be enforced. Wikipedia can enforce the content on their site. The IETF is, is more in line with Bitcoin, but there are still methods of enforcement indirectly through the companies who are constituents of that. Like a, a nonprofit can enforce what they are doing with their assets. That is but, not the case when it comes to me and what software I choose to run. You so have if yet I decide, to explain to me hold on. how you can enforce no, no, no. a I'm, different I've piece it of very software. Clearly. So you're telling me that if I choose to run a different version of TCP than the IT, IETF has defined, that I, I can do so without penalty. Because I bet you the penalty is that I can't get to work with TCP that exists. I mean, these are standards. Like, I, Shinobi, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you can, you can say that this doesn't make sense and, like, everyone has to decide what they think, but I think that you're, you're probably being willfully ignorant here. I think that you have, and I don't know why, because like none of this is bad for Bitcoin. Um, in fact, I, th I think that a lot of this is great for Bitcoin. Uh, if we just it, you know embrace the fact that leadership works. Uh, but I, but it, it, you have like some like mental block. It seems to me that like if I give you a very concrete example of governance working uh, in, in many different ways outside of. Uh, Y Again, this, this you, now you're definition going of, back and conflating governance with a governmental structure, which is something that I clarified at the very beginning of this. Like you, you are the, not, you are not offering between, a consistent or rational uh, argument here at ever. You're just jumping well, I'm, from I'm thing a very, to thing. And as, a very as you, no, hold on, Chris. Irrational and you're person. offering analogies 
that do not map one to one to the situation. You, you've yourself said many times that you don't do well with analogies. So why are you trying to essentially offer nothing but analogies to me as far as your argument goes? Well, I've offered a lot more than I've offered the concrete examples within the context of Bitcoin. You didn't like those. So then I found other governance systems and you didn't like no, those. No, because you moving to a drive chain does not enforce upon me anything. It does not force me to do anything. It's the environment in which I have to make a choice changing. It does not force me to make any specific choice. Like, how do you not see this? Well, first off, I think you've reversed like the, the 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 initial causal effect kind of thing. I think I think you were making the claim that people could choose what they wanted in terms of bitcoins. And my point was that no, they can't do that because they will receive penalties from core. Now you're saying that if I do that, that uh, you in what you way do they receive with core, a penalty through core? A, like Chris, that's not a core doing anything. It's it's a market doing something. Like you're conflating the actors here. You're conflating the relationships between concepts here. Like what? Well, first off, I, I I think I introduced like the the conflation stuff. But second, like if I chose to run uh, an alternative rule set like Bitcoin Cash, uh, Core's influence and reach will will ensure that my Bitcoin Cash is its own island that doesn't work with Bitcoin Core's rule set. Like that's what they will do. And you see that that's, that's you know not multiple them ways doing that. That's you doing that to yourself by choosing to break off from this mob that you're a part of and going and starting a, a different mob. That has absolutely nothing to do with me, what okay, I'm okay. doing, I'll work or, with or that. any of the choices that I've made. And this is kind of the point, Chris. Like, so what's the mob? You're not making sense here to me at all on any level. Oh, I know that. Well, this is extreme. First off, I want to say this is rocket science. This is the most complicated thing in the world, certainly to Bitcoiners. So I, I get that it's difficult. I don't I don't blame you for a moment for being confused. But it what's interesting is that you no, labeled I'm two not mobs. Confused. You you're not making sense. Well, you labeled two mobs and just just now. You labeled two mobs because it was easy, it was convenient, and it was a label. What two mobs were you describing? I think that's very contextually clear, Chris. And I think the use of the word mob is also very contextually clear as I laid that out and defined that when we started. Well, I, I, I agree, and it would be the Bitcoin Core mob and the Bitcoin Cash mob. So, are we on the same page? Probably not. <laughs> Look, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Shinobi. Like, like the, the deal is that you, for some reason, uh, a number of Bitcoiners have tied the nature of their investment to anarchy. And there's not many of them. There's really, like, you and Acnix are the two, like, ringleaders, and maybe, like, maybe Vortex. <laughs> what? Maybe. I, look, I do the polls. <laughs> I do the polls, dude. Like, my polls are not the best polls, I, but they're better like than your polls. A, I just like being a character and having, having opinions, man, because it's fun and stuff. It seems to work. Well, I mean, here's the thing. When I, when I sorry, pull Chris, Bitcoiners... It is, it is very hard for me to not mock you in a Trump voice right now. It is very hard. <laughs> oh, I deserve full mocking no, at I, all time. Like, I, I know I that. Mean, like, that's not... Don't be, be ashamed about that. I, I totally see this governance structure that Bitcoin has as this constantly like evolving, like almost like whack a mole before you could even pull out the hammer it's, type it's a mob. governance structure. It's a mob that people are advocating to. That's it. That, that's all the, the governance well, it's structure even, is. It's, it's a I, mob, and there's advocates in those mob. Well, the mob either mob, listens to but, those advocates you know. or they don't. That, that's it. That, that's the structure. That, that's what it is. So, so why, why then? How is it that you, in your mind, have found that the exchanges run bitcoin core and bitcoin.org oh, bitcoin core, bitcoin core um as the label of the mob that they are supporting increasingly is it just a coincidence to you i mean like why is that no such a, i think why is Chris, a hot because this, this specific thing comes back to the fact that that's what it is that's just point blank what it is and what it has been and with all of these um break off groups attempting to simply um break off and even though the definition of what they're doing is literally derived from the thing they're breaking away from they're two distinct things with the second thing's definition literally derived from the existence of the first thing and attempting to claim that they are that first thing now that's like i'm leaving the, this club that i'm a part of but that's not me leaving this club that's me becoming this club and that's complete and utter conceptual nonsense and if you've noticed none of these exchanges have have not ran these other forks the exchanges are supporting bitcoin cash that for the most part that is a thing it's recognized it's supported but it is not just being declared this original distinct thing because that's complete and utter nonsense conceptually so they, I, I, I don't know out. what you're trying to say here 
I want to point out, uh, at least in my estimation, that I, I feel like I have a very like even keeled presentation of these ideas, and you your emotions are rising as the conversation is going. You're, you're talking a little bit more uh, loudly and quickly, and, and you're asserting things, and, and I'm I'm feeling <laughs> I'm feeling your your faith being shaken. And I think um, that most no. people listening to this can probably see that. And and what is true about this conversation is, see, Chris, why that do for you some reason do this when somebody offers a counter argument? You you start talking about their emotional state. You start talking about their personality. You, you're literally engaging right now in indirect ad hominems, which by your own definition is kind of you bowing out and, and saying you lost the argument. I, that is not an ad hominem. You do not know what an ad hominem is if you think that labeling the presentation you're you're indirectly of, making of your, your, your argument as a to, emotional to presentation me you're you're talking as about being, me no now. i'm not saying <laughs> well you're 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 like getting very my my thesis here the central thesis is that you have a, a emotional tie to this notion of structure being the antithesis of your investment so like to the degree that it's an ad hominem is completely out the window because like that is number one the central thesis but number two um part and parcel with i think a description of the state of things it's not to say that like your opinion is bad because you are 16 it's it's a assessment of your emotional state because of a the relevance and b its presentation so, delivery. so in other words you are again trying to undermine every logical argument i've made um, through an assessment of, of my emotions of my psychology no, I, I instead mean, I don't of offering mind. a simple logical counter argument because that, well, that's what it seems like you're doing to me right now. No, what, the, what you also don't understand is that passion motivates people more so than logic. And like I, I went over the logical stuff and your passion overrode. I mean, that's a huge part of what I believe. That's why I wrote in my governance section. And that's truthfully the way that most people process things. And I, I think that anybody who doesn't understand that is often the most easily manipulated, quite frankly. Chris, oh, you I mean, are ridiculous you right now. Like, <laughs> point blank. I'm a ridiculous person. I make no bones about it. I love ridiculous. I mean, that's the briar patch. We get in there and we get crazy. It's a fun spot. You know, I don't know. Like, I, I'm watching you embrace Aporia more and I'm watching you kind of, like, I don't know, absorb some of these thoughts. I have no doubt that in six months' time, you'll absorb the most of them. And, and I won't hold you to that. I won't, I won't do, like, the I told you so thing. I don't, I don't really like to do that to people. Um, I, I think, honestly, that uh, organization will achieve success. And my concern, my honest to God concern See, is Chris, that the, like you, hold on, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Let me, right hold on, now, hold on. Me. There's very important, you're talking over me and, and it's okay, but let me just finish. My honest to God concern is that the organization that I see coming outside of the Bitcoin Cash and the NYA people are starting to exceed the organization that I see with Core. So for me, that that is my particular concern here. See, Chris, okay, the way that go. you're engaging right now and the way that you're offering uh, counter arguments to me shows me that you you didn't really come here to debate this topic on, on a rational or logical or conceptual level. You simply came here to see what I had to say and then try to turn the topic or the subject into me. Instead of actually debating the abstract concepts themselves, you are now talking about me, my psychology, my emotional state. And it really seems to me like that was your intent in coming here. It was to, to try and analyze or make me a subject of discussion instead of the actual concepts that we're talking about or we're supposed to be talking about. Well, I mean, I, first off, I came here because uh, a lot of people wanted to see better discussions on governance in the Briar Patch. And most people in Bitcoin are scared to death of this conversation. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say his name, but there's a very prominent, quote unquote, Bitcoin bulldog who was so afraid of the subject that he wouldn't even talk about it. And uh, so I, <laughs> there's like a lot of um, there, there's a lot of like, uh, what's the word? I, there's just a lot of emotion on this subject and, and there's no real easy way for people to communicate it. And for me to come in here um, and expose what I believe is a lot of very straightforward uh, opinions on the matter was important. And, and, and frankly, to, to expose the emotional response to that is also probably, to some degree, interesting. I don't know if it's important or not. Um, I'm watching the channel here. I think people want, you know, I wanted to kind of try to focus this on like a central like debate kind of thing. We didn't really quite get to that for good reasons. I think I'm making the case for government. I don't know if I'm actually we're at that point or we will get to that point. That was kind of my goal. And then, you know, look at the channel and then some people are like, ah, oh, Chris is getting, you know, shot. And then other people are like, ah, oh, the Shinobi is. So like, I think people want to see some degree of conflict resolved here. And I don't know if the channel wants to win, but like, uh, for me, I think everyone has to decide, is BIP a form of governance? 
And if so, is governance an efficiency? And but see, again, we Chris, we've that? been over this. The, the a BIP process has nothing to do with anything outside of the project Bitcoin Core. And Bitcoin Core, in the context of the outside environment, is literally nothing but a group producing software and advocating for it. They have no governance structure over like encompassing anything outside of that software. They is have that no true ability of the I- to IETF? enforce that on the group. Isn't that true of the ITF, IETF? Like, I, I don't know. Look, here's the thing. I'm, Plumble user, uh, whoever he is, says, Chris, you can't deconstruct Bitcoin governance without essentially attacking Bitcoin itself. Um, I don't know where that moral came from, but it, it's clearly a moral that a lot of Bitcoiners have. I, I don't know why, other than probably Andreas started it, frankly, my suspicion. And I, well, I just no, don't accept I mean, that moral. I think it's related to what I said earlier, how like it, uh, the puzzle, you know, it, it kind of comes together and there's pieces that naturally fit in place as you go along. So you could remove whoever from Bitcoin's developer uh, structure. I don't know if you want to call it governance because I don't really see it that way, but you could swap in and out developers out of there. And it doesn't really matter because essentially the rest of the crowd, the rest of the mobs, not going to let pieces of the puzzle that don't fit in the wrong place. Well, I mean, you know, govern- I mean, this, these are the starts of governance conversations. What do we do when someone gets hit by a bus? You know, what do we do when um, people fail in their duties? Like, like, these are solved problems already. And they all have a name. You know, it's leadership and management and culture and, and so on and so forth. So uh, we, can, we can get into the, hem- the hows and whys but of this it. Is a 24-hour, this is a 24-hour thing. Like, it doesn't stop. They're, they're, you know, it's not the same as a company or a business. There's few things that they compare easily to this and it really needs that whack-a-mole type governance where, you know, you pull out the hammer and you try and whack one and the guy's already gone. And, you know, there's another guy who's governing over there. It popped up. Who's he? We don't even know, but he's talking to the devs and he's communicating and he knows what's going on. And, Oh shit, there's another one. That's the way I kind of see Bitcoin uh, development go. And I think it only gets better over time because we're going to move towards breaking the wallet up a centralized library, which does all these mean things. And and from then, a lot of the issues just get into like UTXO sets. And then we break the, we break down the argument into these other different facets and parts, which, you know, at that point, like, what is Bitcoin core? Just a set of initial consensus libraries, you know? Okay. okay so then we're often talking about UTXO sets like all day long for, you know, like, a, like it has a very nice natural progression. That's a very constructive discussion. Because in that discussion, you, you have acknowledged that there is at least some form of governance that is controlling these things. And uh, you can say that Bitcoin is very different than other systems, and I agree. But uh, See, Chris, I think we're again, at a stage where we are at least talking about how there is a hierarchy of order. See, and I, again, and I Chris, you like, can't I, talk I, about a hierarchy of order. I laid these distinct things out as we started, and now you seem to be moving towards conflating them again, despite me actually laying out their distinctness at the very start of this. The process Shinobi, of governance do does not imply of order? A, a real hierarchy. It is a mob. There are groups that are advocating, and the mob either decides to do decides not not has something enforced on them to do what an advocacy group is advocating or they don't and you again just tried to boil down the bit process to a governance structure okay it, it's it is not a governance structure outside of the context of the core software project the bit process has no mechanism whatsoever to enforce anything on any user running software it has no way to enforce anything. I, this enforcement thing is like your own thing at this point. I don't, we, we discussed it for as much patience as I had. I don't mind doing it more if you want, but I think that's, that's the channel heard as much as it needs to hear on that subject, and they have their own opinion at this point. But what I would like to know now, Shinobi, is do you believe that there are individuals that have a greater hierarchy in the production of Bitcoin outcomes over others? No, I think that there are advocates who advocate louder than others. But again, like I said, this is simply the, the loudness of a person's advocation. There, there is no hierarchy there. There is simply the volume with which they are advocating. Uh, like, you, like, what do you, like, Chris, 
You just keep conflating these things. And now, now the, the enforcement is a core central issue to this. And you've now said that we won't discuss this anymore, despite not getting to the bottom of it and speaking for the channel that they have made up their minds. Like I have yet to have a satisfactory answer as to how there is a governance structure in the context of the entire ecosystem, Bitcoin itself. Like, where, where is that rationalization? Where is that explanation, Chris? Because the bit process can't make me do anything. It absolutely can make you do it, uh, tons of stuff. I went over it. I went over it at length. You have a, you are willfully ignorant. You have a mental block. You will not see it. Look, there, there is a hierarchy of just leadership here. That, that is an important term that everybody should know. It is a just leadership. These are people who have earned their keep. They are specialized and they are good. And that hierarchy controls things. And there is a system of delegation, of responsibility, of expectation amongst these individuals on the hierarchy. And no, there's not. There's a pile of work that people choose to volunteer in themselves to tackle different parts of this pile of work. There, there's, M a delegation. MFW. there's a pile that people walk up to and choose pieces of and voluntarily work on. Like, Chris, like you keep just stating this as fact. But I have yet to get a satisfactory line of reasoning as to why that is so. You just because you stating. you have a mental block. You, it's impossible. The structure of your investment is such that your personal character is incompatible with a world where there is a process of just leadership in Bitcoin. That that so okay, you have now, Chris, to deny in that. In what way is this not ad hominem? In, in what way you you are essentially indirectly I, saying that I, I, I am too stupid to understand what you're no, saying. And you're, you're going to sit here and say that because you didn't correctly use the word stupid, that you're not implying that. You are literally engaging in ad hominem in, in a roundabout way. That, that's what you're doing right now. Just real quick for MFW who says that the Wait, mob – like, Chris. Chose, Sorry. Yeah. I, just, I just got here. I can't stay here long, but I'm, I just heard a few things. Uh, um, refuse to upgrade. How do you explain people that refuse to follow core? And what happens when you have people within core – you know, disagree. Like what happened with the UASF? Like how how do you explain BIP 148? How do you explain BIP 91? How do you explain all that? That had nothing to do with war. I mean, we have failed measures all the time. I don't know what to tell you, but like we, even like the Vietnam War or something like that might be an example. But this of, wasn't a failed measure. How was this a failed measure? We have I, I don't know that today. I heard. I don't know that I heard your whole. You were kind of popping in and out. Can you repeat the question because maybe I didn't understand it? I'm saying, how do you? How can you explain BIP 148 and BIP 91? Because core had absolutely nothing to do with that, but yet we have SegWit today without any splits. Well, I, I don't. I don't think that governance requires that you have to have like a special permission to enter in a vote of some kind. Like anybody in a governance system that wasn't can make a, a vote, suggestion. But that wasn't a vote. That was okay. A group of people that decided to renode either the miners and started enforcing those rules, or they or they decided to not enforce those rules and create a hard fork. But that had nothing to do it with was core. Clearly, it was clearly a vote in the sense that like, it was chosen to not pass by people who were in a greater part of the hierarchy than the person who suggested the change, if I understand your question. But like, anybody, I think your disconnect is in whether or not anybody can suggest a change. And I don't think that governance precludes uh, access to suggestion by people, if that answers. All right, I see what you're saying. Um, but how do you explain then... Everyone that's been since XT, you had classic XT, uh, BU, everybody that tried to break consensus rule, um, no one actually forked away. And to this day, you have, you know, Bitcoin Cash, you have Bitcoin Connect, you have Clams, you have now XT. I mean, not XT, you have uh, SegwitX. You have all these things. Um, but yet, no one is viewing those things as Bitcoin. Everyone is viewing Bitcoin Core as Bitcoin. It's just regular Bitcoin. But you have other implementations besides Core. Like, how do you explain, um, you know, every other implementation? It's a great question, and it's one I thought about a lot. And the answer is that there's very little to no efficiency in absorbing the liabilities of an existing project when you can snap your fingers and create liabilities out of thin air, which is what we've seen with the thousands of shit coins and ICOs. So what is interesting is that we, for me at least, are at a point where now there's a group of people who primarily for ideological reasons, it would seem, but possibly for finance, poss and this is where it gets really interesting, possibly for financial reasons, have decided that they, they would stand to benefit by absorbing the liabilities of Bitcoin 
and taking it in a different direction rather than snapping their fingers and creating IOUs out of thin air. And the reason this is also very important is because I think the SEC is going to start curbing the, the out of thin air uh, route, which would mean that there would be a greater impetus in financial gain on people who would rather uh, absorb existing liabilities than create new ones. That, that would be my answer. And I don't know that I'm correct about that, but it is a very interesting question. All right, let's take one more question then. Um, say Greg Maxwell decides, I don't know, he decides to say that 21 million coins isn't enough. We have to add more coins. What makes you think everyone else that's running nodes are going to agree with him? Yeah, I mean, they're not. I mean, they're so different than the United States. Like, there was a time when the United Kingdom said we had to pay our taxes over T, you know, ostensibly. But there's a huge difference there. There, you could use force and you can make people go along with you. Here, you can't. Here, I could voluntarily stay on this chain and it's a minor commodity because it's probably going to be the most powerful chain to mine and you can't really do anything about me moving. Oh, that's the NYA question because here we are in a sense that the Miners are now aligned in, in a measure of what is probably forced by most reasonable terms uh, would it theoretically be inclined to uh, go left when core wants to go right. And th- in, in that sense, they have a systemic risk if they don't change the proof of work algorithm and the NYA signers want to attack the core decision. So like that, that might that might play into your analogy there. Um, the other side of it is, is you know, social uh Social influence, you know, like, you, you, you know, again, I would, I would defer everyone to the um, Jen Senko movie where she talks about how her father was effectively co-opted uh, by the Republican Party for voting on things that weren't even in his own interest, which is what we see with uh, Bitcoin Cash. And so I, it's completely plausible to me that that can happen in Bitcoin. Like it's, some people well, are really there's, dumb. See, I can't I see. I, I, I don't buy that argument. I can't. I, there's no possible way that Bitcoin forks and that fork is going to keep the same algorithm and it's not change difficulty and survive. It's just impossible. There's no way that could happen. Uh, Bitcoin Cash worked because of the emergency difficulty adjustment. So that was, you know, that's how they basically are surviving right now. But even that is going to have to go through another hard fork because right now they're going through hyperinflation um, and then they're not finding blocks for hours at a time. So they're either going to have to change algorithms or they're going to have to, you know, fix the difficulty adjustment. With Segwit 2x, it's either going to work or it's not. It's either going to be the more profitable coin to mine where everyone decides to move over or it's not. And if it's not, there is no difficulty adjustment there. So by the time they find a block, it, it might take months before the difficulty starts adjusting. Um, so there's absolutely no way that you're going to be able to have two Bitcoins with the same algorithm and the same um, difficulty adjustment. Yeah, I mean, like, look, again, Aporia is like so important. Like, I don't I don't want to come here and tell you that I figured everything out um, or even anything out other than for me what the what the big underlying narrative is that I'm uncomfortable with is growing resentment over core, uh, which is a group that I think most Bitcoiners actually like. And in, I guess, adhering to anarchist values, what should happen, what should happen, if I would guess, uh, is that a group of um, well oiled, connected, and powerful lobbying interests should be able to co-opt uh, the network at some point. And I don't think that'll happen with NIA, NYA, and I don't think it'll happen soon, but if there isn't but co-op, an allegiance... But, yeah, but Chris, that, that's the thing. They could co-opt the developing team, but I still have to download that node. That's how Bitcoin works. It's a bunch of nodes that are connected to each other that we all agree on. I have, I'm the end user. I need to f- down, They have to convince me to download that node. Well, it used to be that Bitcoin was whatever had the most work, and then I saw that track no, change. No, no, Chris, no. Listen, absolutely Chris, that's not. See, that was one of the things was, I told. Hold on, hold on. I was telling Tone. I was telling Tone this was going to happen. I knew that eventually, when Alpha Bay was going to go down and dark markets going to get started getting priced out, I knew you were going to come into into a panic attack where you're going to be like, "Holy shit." You know what? Dark markets wasn't the thing that's fueling this. I remember when you thought the Super Bowl was going to go on, Bitcoin was going to start, you know, going to the moon because everyone's going to want to start betting. That didn't happen. It's Bitcoin isn't what you thought it was. I mean, you just have to accept that. It, B- Bitcoin, the whole proof of work thing oh, was uh, that. Real quick, uh, Hado, Chris, section I, I don't, I don't accept that. They're, those are from the fabrications. We to be clear, those are fabrications. Scenario of an attacker trying to generate an alternative chain faster than the honest chain. Even if this is accomplished, it does not throw the system open to arbitrary changes. It is the longest valid chain. It has always been the longest valid chain. 
you literally just initiated a straw man and attempted to argue with a straw man. That, that is exactly what you just did right now. I, I don't I don't know why you said that. First off, let me just real clear. This, this Super Bowl thing, uh, I don't think that I've ever made that comment. I think that the comment I probably made was that it would be a, a correlation if, in fact, the gambling markets were a substantial part of the value that it would go up. And frankly, it, there probably is some evidence, if not some great evidence for that, because you guys can listen on my Patreon. I had a whole conversation with a, with a casino guy uh, that I can't air publicly uh, about this thing. And um, that, that's certainly a undercurrent. But um, as far as the dark day is concerned, I mean, like the speculation, I, I was definitely wrong about the nature of speculation. I, I thought people's uh, greater sense would override the nonsense that ended up happening. Um, and I believe there will be a return to uh, a fundamental value proposition if the regulations don't curb uh, speculative activity. And since they're not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go to the moon for as long as it is uh, unregulated. Um, so anyways, I, I don't know, Mr. Hoddle. But OK, so go back. So you said there's a straw man that I created. What was the straw man that I created, Shinobi? That, that Bitcoin has always been the longest valid chain. Or, I mean, the longest chain. It has been the longest valid chain. And I literally just recited to you the section of the white paper in which Satoshi says even if an attacking chain outpaces the honest chain, it does not throw the system open to arbitrary changes because it is the longest valid chain. Well, who decides what's valid, Shinobi? We've been over this a couple of times. I actually gave you this no, definition it, in the no, last talk. And what, what is the straw man exactly? You, you literally just asserted something as an argument that was widely made by people from our camp, for lack of a better word, that was never made by people in our camp, for lack of a better word. What was the argument? I think that it's the longest chain, simply longest. No, the most work. Bitcoin. Look, I, I remember the early, the early days, uh, very well on this, and it was it was the common refrain at the time that if there were uh, issues of, of any kind, the notion of validity would be defined by what had the most work. Now it seems like that's an unpleasant testnet testnet would have the most, most work most valid work i don't think that testnet Dude. has the most work no testnet definitely has the most work man most testnet valid definitely valid has the most work your muffled scam it's most valid work you would, you would also have that to doesn't, understand that doesn't sound remotely you, possible because that why would you be putting in so much energy into testnet if you could put that money into bitcoin instead and actually receive value no that i'm saying true. it's been it's been Okay, well, it's the longest w chain, I guess, is what they would uh, what they would say. Maybe not the most work. You're right. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, but look, I don't, I don't what even about, mind. Like, what about how all do this you, passion. Look, look at all the passion. This passion's great. But like, on, no, note that yeah, that that's how people are making reasons, not like sitting down and like having like discussions. Uh, I'm not about sure what you're trying to like. What are you trying to get? At? You want governance here? Is that what what's going on? No, I, well, I, it's not what I want. I mean, look, here's the thing is that I, I, I would like well, to it's definitely something that you want. <laughs> no, I mean, here's the thing is I want people to recognize it exists is really what I want. And, and then the second part will be a discussion over how we can make it better. But, but what I want is to, the recognition can, that exists already. But can you come to terms that even <clears throat> with any hard fork, with, if, if you want to do any change to Bitcoin, the original chain, you're not going to get rid of the original chain. Can you, you could we agree to that? You could unroll the blocks in some capacity, but it's unlikely or impossible. So I think so. We could agree to that. I mean, that's a lot of work that you're going to have to put into unrolling. Uh, yeah, the I know. I just don't. I don't know where we're going with it. I just but, want to make right, sure so, we no. So that. what I'm saying is that with this current chain that we're in right now, you can't really do much to it. You might be able to create another chain and get you know majority of the people on that chain. That might that chain might get a bigger market cap. That might be the more popular chain. But you're not going to be able to do anything to this chain. How do you yes. do, how do you know how do you know what how that other chain is different than this chain? How how did you decide that? How did you know well, that this when chain you wasn't break the consensus other chain? rule? What do you mean? Well, if I'm not moving, if I'm still compatible with all the other nodes, going back to basically zero seven, I mean, uh, nothing's changed. People are running right now. We have a guy in Core Slack that refuses to upgrade any fucking node. He's okay. running on zero. I think even earlier than zero seven. So just to be clear, then if, if there was if there was any hard fork in Bitcoin, you would. Declare the main right, chain Chris, to be a failed Chris, project. I, I want to clear up uh, another straw man. Nobody here is denying that there is a governance process. I have actually you did. explicitly. Well, that was, we've that come process. to consensus. There is we've a done mob. It. Chris, no, <laughs> you, did you, it. you do this all the time, Chris. You no, anybody who's been listening to this, well, even absolutely. Absolutely. No, Chris, let me speak now. I literally 
differentiated a government structure from the process of governance when you first got here. I then went on to describe the governance process that exists in the space. There is the mob of users, and there are internal structures to advocacy groups. There is no official governance structure of the mob. There are internal structures of the advocacy groups, and the governance process of the entire system is these advocacy groups advocating and the mob either doing what they advocate for or not. I literally was crystal clear in distinguishing those two things. So why are you conflating these things when I literally started off distinguishing them and very crystal clearly defining the governance process? Why are you well, doing that, Chris? Well, I, I think you're 100% right, Shinobi. I'm 100% wrong, and we, we have resolved this issue. There is a governance process to Bitcoin, and I'm fine with that. And I don't, I don't, I don't care if we want to continue the conversation in another direction, but I mean, that, that subject seems like a great place for me to be wrong and you to be right on. I think anyone who's listening to this knows I mean, that, uh, it's, that's what rules. happens. It's rules without rulers. I mean, that's what Bitcoin is. Well, we I have mean, a set of fine, rules. But like, then let's give it a name. Should we get, or we shouldn't give the process a name. I mean, call it what you want to call it. You want, I mean, but it's, I'm going mean, to call it core. What are you going to call it? Oh, not core. Uh, what? Like, dude, are you kidding yeah. me? Dude, are you insane? Why core? I don't understand. So, what happens? Like, what happens when the developers leave? Like, you know, when they start going away, new people Great come questions. in. We sh- these are the, Chris, now that we've exalted. Hold on. Now I that we've acknowledged that the well. governance exists, I, I went over that. We can ign- well. we can discuss how to make Ooh. it better. <laughs> what? All right, let's discuss. What do you? What's what's your proposition? How do we make this better? Well, I don't really. I'm not like an oracle here, you know. I'm I'm going through <laughs> it, so like you can well, read you're all my writing. Well, you these questions. All right, I'm, I'm ready to listen. How do we make it better? You have to have some ideas. I do. I have a bunch of ideas, and like I, right, and, and a lot of them. Well, a lot of them have to do with voting because I don't I don't believe that I have magic knowledge. So what I do is I, I vote in the channel. But voting write, doesn't matter. You can't vote in Bitcoin. There's no way to get a solid dude, voter. Or else so this thing would have been a lot easier. So hard. Everything would have been a lot easier. Yeah. Well, if we been, actually. If we actually could figure out what consensus is, everything would make it, everything would be much easier. It's well, look, impossible. I, I, I don't think that a abject democracy is appropriate, and I don't think that core should be run by anything but a meritocracy. But what I also think is uh, that there are there's room for some degree of uh, democratic processes around here. And I get that there's tons of issues with civil attacks, and I get that there's tons of issues um, with, with all kinds of shit with that. Um, but that, that is, I mean, even the minor signaling to answer your question, that is something that I'm playing with currently to see how we feel about varying things, mostly unrelated to core, by the way. But, um, that is one thing that I'm, I'm working on in part to define what I think would be a more just and egalitarian form of leadership, uh, for my discussion community that, uh, that I'm working on here at the the Briar patch. Like, look, I'm new to this just like you guys are. The only difference I think between me and you guys is that I feel, um, unblocked, in an emotional capacity to acknowledge that there's Whoa, a governance don't process. Don't want me in. Don't want me in in that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fine. I mean, look, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fucking expert on this stuff. My my goal was to acknowledge that there's a government process. We are at the conversation point where that has happened. And, yeah, but and then my to, goal is hey, to discuss. I, but this I, government I, been, process, you have Chris, to convince in order to make a change. Again, oh, one second. Is the one process. second. It, government is a formalized structure. There is no order, government here. There, there is a and, process. Shino, uh, to which be I, clear, Shinobi is 100 percent correct here was in the debate. Described this process. That's kind of the like, issue. Like, Shinobi, you're, Bitcoin you're, has governance. It doesn't have government, and I don't know if it can have government. Look, look like fine, but like the, the Earth has governance and doesn't have government. I don't know that the Earth can have government. I mean, we tried the United Nations, yeah, right? That's but like, like exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Okay, and that's reasonable. Um, you know, I think. Shinobi doesn't want to like leave in disgrace or something, having like seceded like some some point, and that's perfectly fine because I I think if that's a legitimate <laughs> a legitimate source of confusion that he had, then maybe that's the legitimate source of confusion that others. I don't have. think anyone no, but there's I mean there's definitely a process of what goes down in Bitcoin. It's just it's just there's no rulers. There's rules. It's rules without rulers. That's what Bitcoin is. Well, it's, it's, there's their merit based hierarchies of influence. And um, sometimes less so. Like, and, and this would be a way that we yeah, but, could talk about but government. But so far, governance. but but so far, no, none of those people that have, you know, the reason they first of all have any say at all is because they're competent. They're the best at what they do, so we listen. But if they decided to, you know, inflate the supply or change something up in a way that makes Bitcoin less valuable, 
I'm not going to run that node. You have to conv- – and then the problem with hard forks is that you have to convince everybody or else you're going to have another chain behind. So you literally have to con- – and then some people are just not going to upgrade for political reasons. Other people are not going to upgrade because they can't upgrade. Maybe their internet isn't fast enough. And then you have a whole other group of people that don't even know that they need to upgrade. So well, that, like, that, I mean, here's, here's, uh, These are all great concerns that have no clear and obvious solution. And uh, I think all forms of government. But that's the point. But that, but that's a feature. Dude. That's not a bug. I agree. That's an act- look, I wrote that into my I wrote that into my ethos here, and I wrote it in, in the form that, uh, that there's a significant degree of failure and subjectivity in the process of striving for improvement. And look, here's another great way that I think we as a community could be doing more. Let's see if you want to digest this. I think that the exchanges are sitting on too much authority over what to do during these forks, and I think as a community. We are in a position to make that decision if we yeah. coordinate better. And no, we can no, I think exchanges. I think I think exchanges. I think exchanges the need, in the community. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, eventually, what's going to happen is the user is going to just have that private key, and then he's going to be able to do what he wants with the, those coins. You can't rely on exchanges to support every single hard fork. I could have hard fork Bitcoin yesterday. I could take a million dollars. And then I could start having a marketing team, and then all of a sudden they're going to have service my hard fork. It's going to be impossible for them to do that. Well, the exchanges again, I, have I don't no think... authority whatsoever. They have weight, which is given them directly by people whose coins they're holding. And the only degree to which they can be argued to have authority is in so much as the legal jurisdictions in which they are housed – Give them legal authority. Ooh. Well, I hate to break it to you, Chris, but most oh, things oh, here, that's so, that's most, so tough. most jurisdictions here that's have so very black and white legislation in dealing with fraud. And to take a, a distinct thing from what is Bitcoin and attempt to define it as Bitcoin is fraud. So, like, where where do what is this argument that author, like exchanges have authority to define anything uh, come into your head here? Okay, so like first off, the, the channel wants to know how you define weight, if not authority, and I, I don't know, I don't care what you call it, but like these, again, you really seize on these words. They're so powerful to you, and and this is how you're being persuaded. By the way, this is exactly how through these appeals, your emotions are being like co-opted. No, but this is how through, I'm I'm rationalizing using logic. What is going on here? Because words I mean, have meanings in context and in their conceptual linkages. Words are not just some amorphous thing that mean whatever you want. They are part of a lexicon that conceptually describes things, and they are very narrowly defined within that lexicon for a reason, to aid in conceptual conveyance. Like, uh, I mean, I, I'm not you, the best writer. Getting? I'm not the best writer, but the etymology of words is a, a very well-acknowledged phenomenon, and we saw it happen with blockchain, and I, I don't think that this sort of concreteness that you feel exists in the spoken word exists. Uh, again, I'll, I'll defer to the audience on that. I mean, um, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to tell you that the reason Bitcoin is ungovernable governable is because of the nodes. I mean, that's that's really. I mean, the devs could do whatever they want to do, but in the end of the day, I have to download that fucking node. Well, what if Bitcoin I have Cash was this? What if Bitcoin Cash was a soft fork and like at some level no, Bitcoin, it was Bitcoin able Cash to? Bitcoin Cash wasn't a soft fork. I, no, I man. What, Bitcoin Cash. I said, what if Bitcoin Cash was a soft fork? And, that doesn't uh, make any sense. They were, the whole point of Bitcoin Cash was to break consensus rule. They wanted to raise the block size. So let I mean again, this I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to sort of delineate the subjectivity of the soft and the hard fork in terms of nodes, and maybe that's a bad direction to go in. But you you could conceivably have, and I, I get that this is hokey, but I'm trying to extend the inference here. Uh, you could have a, a side you could have a side chain or something that uh, I don't know uh, added additional block size in some weird ass way that made them happy because it's just it, it, these are these are faith based initiatives like the, the science is irrelevant to Bitcoin Cash and we all know it and you said as much earlier um, you know they they'll fork at any time and and this, this sort of faith based thinking permeates the space and it has not hit Bitcoin up until recently and and again that's a big part of why I'm starting to sort of see things in, in these terms um, I just want to return real quick to Coinbase. Um, the authority that Coinbase has is over what they give their users. So, like, you, you, you may think that it is a concrete issue that you are getting some coins back. But I, I don't know how you explain to a judge and a jury that uh, NYA is or isn't Bitcoin and how the alternative to NYA that shall not be named is or isn't Bitcoin. But, de- but deferring so, it so to a judge <laughs> is a loss. That's well, the point. By, value, so, by, the, that. by, by you the value. see a difficulty in explaining concepts to people, that means that these exchanges 
have authority to arbitrarily define something. That that's ridiculous. I mean, they could they could rename well, another is- chain something else. But hold on, Chris. The problem is like blockchain. All those all these SPV wallets are going to have a problem explaining to their users why all of a sudden the bitcoins that they're receiving are worth eighty percent less in value. Forget well, I mean, about look, the name for a second. It, it's about the value. Currently, cur- I, I get that. But look, how about this? Let's say let's imagine a universe where the NYA goes through, and there is now an NYA coin, and there is a Bitcoin. Uh, wh- which which Bitcoin has more value in the case that the NYA coin has like ten times the hashing power? Like you, you may want to say that it is not Bitcoin at that point, and that's fine. All right, you could uh, say whatever, whatever you, you want to say. Subscribe to the labor theory of value. So you you think that value is defined in the terms that Marxists define it? No. <laughs> what I'm saying is, well, well then, why does the that, hash rate have anything to do with the value? That's like saying you because should, there's more people digging a hole. If all than, than well, you're after, the point. Than the after New York, no, I get it. Value. I get it. After after this whole New York thing, we're going to find out what happens when if all of a sudden you're going to see 80 percent of the hash power move over, but that chain doesn't gain any value if the, all the money still stays, you know, on this current chain. Then, my only point, my only point is, wouldn't it be great if Bitcoiners said to Coinbase, "Damn it, I want to hold Bitcoin Core, and not some amorphous thing that changes based on fashion and politics." But what if Coinbase no, still runs Toshi? What if, what if they're still running their Ruby client or BTCD or, or Bitcoin? Uh, it's again like it's the same network, but is it a different asset now because they're running different software? You, you see where this goes, Chris? No, respectfully, this is where your competency as a programmer is impacting your ability to assess what's going on because the consensus code is Bitcoin Core there. And they run, last I checked, multiple it's, it's, versions no, it's of the, Bitcoin it's Core. It's the reference ensure... client by which other clients write their consensus code. But Bitfury there, there doesn't even run Bitcoin Core. In, no, they, hold on, the miners, yeah, like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You think, you think the miners run Bitcoin no, Core? No, they don't. Coinbase. 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 No, I'm asking you about the miners. Do you think the miners are running Core? I, I, I Alex would, Petrov, he fucking has his own customized implementation that he's running. I, I would, I would assume they spot check it directly to core, but the nature of their environment uh, has less to do with um, the risk model that is, I, I guess, you know, contingent to exchanges, which is where this whole thing came up. So, like, to the degree that we, you know, dissect what minor incentives are, we can do that. But this was more to do with what Bitcoiners can say and do about their investment as a organized, a more organized group. And that, yeah, would, that would be the, the greater point here. I don't know. Mining that's like kind of a, to me. Anyway. That's kind of a weird point, Chris, because there there are actually a lot of like different implementations people tend to run at exchanges and and uh, brokerages and and mining firms. I mean, it can it you'd be surprised. Okay, so I got like ten minutes left. This is already an hour over what I, I budgeted, but it is a good conversation, and I, I appreciate. I mean, my point here. of this whole thing is that the yeah, reason I think Bitcoin. Is- the reason I think Bitcoin is ungovernable is because you have to convince people to run these fucking nodes. And that's going to be very, very hard. If you're going to try to make Bitcoin less valuable, it's going to be very hard to convince these people to run these nodes. That's why you have fake Satoshi right now running around saying how validating nodes don't matter. You don't need to run it. I rely on the SPV wallet. It's the whole point of all this. Okay, so there's like 10 minutes left. I, I would genuinely like to know what it is that we lose by labeling Bitcoin that is currently for sale on exchanges, say, labeling it Bitcoin Core? Like, what is it that we lose? What do we gain, um, Chris? I'd say that's the more important question because it changes absolutely nothing about the functional nature of the system, how they work. Um, the, it, like, it, it, just because it's called Core instead of Bitcoin has absolutely no legal implications as far as the definition of something. Because like I said, this is like you cannot argue a derivative fork is Bitcoin. It is literally drawing its definitional nature from deriving off of the original. It cannot so, be I'd like to answer, the thing that it's leading from. And hold on, too. All it, all these are morals. Do is these are morals. You, you never liability. chose those values. Somebody chose those values for you. Those are morals. There's no greater cognition to them other than repeating the thing you were told. No, that is that is nothing to do with morals whatsoever. That is a conceptual, logical distinction between two distinct things you cannot just become a thing by leaving a thing when you quit a gun club you do not become the gun club you leave the gun club when you quit your job you do not become the job you leave you become unemployed this is become unemployed basic conceptual 
but like no, definitions. You become, when you leave like, things, you become the X member and the new thing. So I don't know where you decided that you like have a gen, like well, that's journey kind of the argument that you are making when you say that it should be explicitly labeled as Bitcoin Core. You're well, saying you ask me that why. There is I'd like no to answer what we gain. Nature. I'd love to tell you what we gain by doing this. You asked me that, and if you are interested in my answer, I, I will tell you. And the very easy answer is that we get to keep the courts from defining what Bitcoin is. That is going to be so bad, but not everybody sees that, and and that's fine. But that is what we gain is that we get to decide what Bitcoin is rather than the U.S. justice system. Now, now in, in terms of what we lose, it seems like what we lose is um, your, your emotions at some level. I don't, know, I don't know that I heard, you know, quote-unquote logic, other than, I guess, if you leave Bitcoin, you're no longer Bitcoin, is what your, is what your statement would be. If, if you change the label that is Bitcoin by another name, it is no longer Bitcoin. I think that's but what I'm you're still, describing. But I'm still running it's, bank when software. You, when, you, when you depart from the, the network in a divergent chain that is no longer backwards compatible to all the clients out there, you are no longer Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash is not Bitcoin. It is Bitcoin Cash when Bitcoin Gold forks off. It's not Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin Gold. Like there is absolutely no risk. Uh, so if we called it Bitcoin Core, it would no longer be Bitcoin. Of Bitcoin. But you can't. Because there is you, the distinct definition of Bitcoin. Like, I got it. Call it. That makes sense. So if you call it Bitcoin Core, it will no longer be Bitcoin. The no, end. But you can't enforce that. Man. No, come on, time out. Like you could call. Fine. All right. Call Bitcoin Core. That's fine, but you can't. Chris, how you can't you enforce, no, that's unenforceable. On, how you just took that away from the words that just came out of my mouth is mind-boggling. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a writer. I know how to, I know how to synopsize things and keep the meaning. I mean, that's that. That seems to be what you are articulating. <laughs> it was very convoluted. You should consider writing your thoughts because it'll help you organize them better. Is my advice. <laughs> There's another question. I don't mind answering. We only got like uh, five I, minutes left. So I, I just I, go off freestyle. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't understand how you can enforce something like that. That's that's oh. unenforceable. Well, no, look, look, I mean, look. that's the thing is that you no, it's it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty enforceable in the sense that like there there is now a delegated uh, definition that you've decided. You've decided that rather than wear hats and wear you know change your Twitter handle and all of these things every single you know month that you as an investor will just delegate the definition to a group. And yeah, I think see, I've the, never done that though. And, well, and I think yeah, there's a fair number of people I don't in think this that's room possible who have here, never though, done that. I don't think that's possible in this fucking space. Like yeah, I really like, think like, that's uh, impossible. So uh, I'm all for. Why is it impossible? We, I, we Bitcoin Cash because we don't have a Bitcoin Core, right? It, I, Bitcoin I would say Cash is fucking done by two away, people. Are you kidding me? Would, <laughs> like it's fucking. So, it's a, there's two guys that created Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean what's I your say, point, though? Your point was that it can't be done, and now your point is that it was done by such a small I would say it's just effort. not core. Like, th this just, like, isn't really core until, like, you separate things out to the point where, like, that that's a library that, that is, like, indicative of, like, core of Bitcoin, right? Like, uh, like, from a literary sense, like, core means, like, the simplest reduction of the thing. And we're not there yet. Like, Bitcoin can't even be called when Bitcoin core When did core, core even yet? exist? Because when it's did core become to existence? A thing it was, yet. like, three years ago, right? Like, three or four years ago? When the fucking track make that website? Oh, no, Look, no, I don't, no. I don't mind if you want to call it was, something else. It was defined by Mike Hearn and pushed for and approved by Gavin. Yeah, that was Hearn's Despite yeah. pretty much every other developer at the time arguing against it because of it was, the implications. Because back then, it was, it was just QT. Or I really was, thought you were going to bring that up earlier, Shinobi. Like, there's a whole thing you can say on that. Like, you, you had talking points there and everything. Yeah, I completely I mean, forgot about that because this is a whole fucking – Core is a new thing. Core is not, has not been here the majority of the fucking time. I agree, but here's the thing: like you can label, you can label like this authority any way you want. It seems like core is the easy go-to. And when I look at our Bitcoin, I see core mentioned every day. Oftentimes, like today, the top three, the top three, two or three um, entries were direct references to Bitcoin Core. And so, like, well, yeah, that's I, I don't see why Roger that's Ver, You had Roger Ver pumping those fucking ideas out for two and a half years. That's why you you have this narrative now. I agree. So hey, Chris, when you the iterate Overton off window of is the expanded. original version that's why of I'm HTTP, here. when you iterate off the original version of HTTP and maintain compatibility, does the next version have to be called HTTP 2x? Does it? Did no, you, you have call to specify speedy. HTTP core, or is it simply a common rule set in which everything is is compatible to different degrees? It, You're it, understanding. What, your understanding of consensus is limited if you think that uh, you can have multiple versions of 
We do. We have multiple engine. versions of no, you don't. Bitcoin Who, Core what running changes? on this network right now. Fucking knots, we, man. Dude, I have blockchain knots running. Info has not upgraded their node since not runs. I run not not core. Zero seven. Not runs not, core. Not really. First, lib for, for, uses lib consensus off core. Last I checked. Uh, see, now sure. we're now we're defaulting to the libs, and that was my point. That like you know, until this project is separated out, where there is a core entity, a core set of devs that works on just the library itself, and that's its own project. Which it is. Okay. Then. So at that time, you would then support this initiative? I would say, yeah, that's core. And then we have enough squabbling in other areas where it's, I'm where it's fine balanced with that too. again. That's, you know? okay, and then fine. we have like... I'm fine with that too. So you know what? We have a very clear consensus or something very close to it at the end of this discussion. And it's already coming to the end of my time by over an hour anyway. So like, I, if that's the way you feel, I will compromise. Uh, and I and I think we will achieve power as a group by compromising incidentally on both sides and achieving greater ends as a result. That's what I think, and I think it's reasonable. Good shit. Yeah. Good. All right. Can well, we get back to fighting and you know bitching and well? Shit, I mean, here's, like, here's right the thing away. about fight. Like, you know, I, I see all these people in the space that want to have arguments and fights, and I love them. They're fun, but you know what? I'm pretty fucking good at it, and it's not fair to people. And you have a lot of people hiding at from me because of it, and and rightly so. I'm a little too good at it. And like it's arrogant, I know, but like I, like it just I'm hot on the heels of like the Bitcoin bulldog who, who won't go into a you know discussion with me because of you know reasons, and it's just very obvious. It's course, like, you know what? Like, my time is better spent ridiculous. organizing, like it, you, organizing what you, what similarities. You're doing here right now is really it's ridiculous. You literally just like not ten minutes ago com put complete ridiculous words in my mouth that had absolutely no conceptual connection to what I said prior to that. And now you're talking about how good you are at arguing and how somebody won't argue with you so that like they have something to hide. Like what the fuck kind of rationalization is that? Like okay, uh, so for anybody for anybody who's listening to this, I would like for you to say what is a more reasonable opinion here. And maybe I'm wrong. Okay, fine. Maybe I'm wrong. Usually when I'm wrong, it takes like three to six months before most people agree. Okay, that's often what ends up happening. So like that could end up happening here. Or hey, maybe I'm completely wrong. I jumped the shark and that's the end. But my suspicion is that they will have gone through this and said, you know what, Shinobi might have been a little unreasonable and a little emotional. And actually what Chris is advocating isn't so bad an idea. And even during that conversation, everybody came to that conclusion. Uh, and, and weigh in, guys. Let me know what you think. How about that? And I, I think that's a good place to end it. And if you guys want to do this on a, a more regular occasion or another time, I'm always up for having discussions with you guys. I hope you don't take great offense at my uh, discussion because I, I like you all very, very much. I don't do know, Chris. We're all, we're all about having heated discussions and then just going back to shit afterwards. We're coming <laughs> to the briar patch. We're, yeah, we're going to ship post there and we're, we're coming and, and watch out. You guys join the briar patch. We talk about a lot of these issues and uh, we talk about almost everything but price at this point. And uh, we're actually looking to start another channel here pretty soon. Uh, after I get these rules ironed out a little bit better, uh, it'll be a, a metric for doing a, a new channel, very much part and parcel with what everybody loves. But a, in, in an effort to organize the conversation, since there's so much of it, we want to try to put funnels together where people can get what they want. And uh, there'll be more information on that soon. So I oh, think that's sweet. it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I wasn't thinking a noob channel. That, that's good stuff. New, new, not nude. Although, uh, you know what? Oh, I, I can... wow. I can probably find some naked pictures too if there's enough interest in that. No, no, no. I said noob, like uh, as in beginner. Oh no, no, no. Um, no, it's not. A, it's, it's not going to be a noob channel. It's, it's. I guess I, I'll just say it. We're, we're we're probably going to have like a Bitcoin only channel, which I, I guess is probably something I should have talked to with others before announcing. But for the purpose of this, um, that is the goal: is to have a a Bitcoin channel and an OT channel. And the OT channel will have lots of stuff like we normally do now, but we'll be able to service like Bitcoin. Uh, talk and we uh, we're working on some of the details on that and hopefully you guys will like that Cool, mm -hmm. all right guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks yeah, for thanks for stopping by. Appreciate Later, it guys. Yep. Bye-bye. Wow, Shinobi Did we just jinx each other and say the same exact thing at the same time? Wow